Tonight we're going to look at the budget, and I know it's the first time you two have seen it. I was able to get it yesterday and had some time, and I have been through it, so I have a number of things to talk about as we go through it. But I'll let um, Dr. Godomsky give us the, or Katie give us the overview, and then we'll um, jump into it. We'll go as slowly as need be, as we've so been all absorbed everywhere that we're going. All right, you, you, uh, I'm not going to go through the entire book here, but mm -hmm. obviously you've got uh, information for now and places to expand as we go through the Warren articles and, and those types of things. So, mm -hmm. uh, under the budget narrative, you'll see that the revenues to transfer um, of the $97,000. You've got uh, the expenditures, which in total right now, and, and you know, I, I say right now because this is an extreme draft at this point. This mm -hmm. is a working document. This is not where it's going to end up. So um, right now it's it's up um, about eight thousand uh, dollars. If you go to the budget FY 2021 budget section, that's pretty much where we're going to be working. So um, just a couple of things before we start on that to call to your attention. The first part, the pink part, is your entire budget. The yellow portion is just Rollins for grade school separated out. Um, which is interesting when you look at that because the, the portion that you really have control over uh, is down about $40,000, $39,000 right now. The, the middle high school budget, which you have virtually no control over because it's tuition-based and transportation, you'll see it's up $47,000, but that's driven on tuition and numbers and you know, just number of kids pump in a number for tuition, and uh, that's where we end up. So we'll spend most of our time tonight on that pink session, section. We can go through one by one. Yeah. I'll, I'll or, take, or not, maybe not exactly one I'll, I'll take you through page by page, and Katie's going to jump in from mm -hmm. time to time. And the narrative has all the lines that increased or decreased. I didn't do every line that stayed flat, but that narrative has every line that increased or decreased okay. for you. So thank you. Um, on the first page, uh, starts with your teacher salaries. Um, if you go down slightly there under benefits, you'll see that the health insurance rate increase came in at 4.5. Originally, when we were uh, putting this budget together, we put a 10% marker in there because we didn't know what it was going to do this year, um, and it came in at 4.5. So, not too bad for, I mean, we've had years that were much higher than that. So. Uh, not too bad. And a 3.9% increase in dental as well. Um, the teacher salaries are, again, a snapshot of what we have right now. Um, it does not include any kind of a collective bargaining agreement. If you reach an agreement, uh, that will go on a warrant article. So. The reason it's down is because we had two teachers retire last year, mm -hmm. but we built the budget for this year. Those teachers were in there, obviously. So. This is showing the change in staff from them leaving to the new staff. So, so this so. essentially reflects the um, uh, having, having um, uh, newer, sort of newer, yep, newer teachers newer to the profession. Yep. Right. right. The existing staff. Yep. Um, let's see. If you go down a little bit more, you'll see tuition. Um, that's your tuition rates in there for Marshwood. Um, Yes, and on that, uh, in, the, in the narrative, you'll see that our tuition went up uh, $706 per student um, this time. That is a, uh, the last biggest jump was, was last year, and it was $430 per student. So this was a big jump. This is the biggest jump we've had. I, I went through and did the, um, how much it's gone up since the very, very beginning. Um, so uh, this is a big jump. The breakout, too, is under the enrollment section in the back of that tab. There's the breakout of how they came to the figure, too, if you wanted to take a look at it. It's in there for and it's, it's based, they have falling enrollments. Yeah. And also, some of our biggest classes are not going through right now either, so, yep. which are counted. So they have falling enrollments. Does that mean, oh, so decrease, they're saying the current enrollment. So, yeah, so mm -hmm. the, so the, the middle school, yeah, so. Mm -hmm. The current budget that we have, we budgeted for 158 students. We have 147 students right now. Okay. In Marshall. In Marshall. Right. Okay. <clears throat> or projected for next year. Not right now. It's 149, I think, or 150 right now. But it's moving the classes up. So, you know, bringing the sixth graders right. over and moving them up, it's 147 kids. Yeah. Plus, we have three uh, contingency students in there as well. 
plus two spots, I believe, for the CTC students that go to um, Stanford. Mm -hmm. right. Right, so before I, I think, should we just do everything while we're going through rather than mm -hmm. have to go up? Yeah. I think that we left in three contingencies. We know we put two, the two in the warrant article. I'm, I, I, I'd like to suggest that we think about removing at least one contingency as we move forward, because we're going to do an, probably going to do another warrant article to put at least two or, or three more uh, tuitions right, in. Because that's safe. Because right, right now we have two. Two. There's two in there. For, in yeah. In there there will be, yeah. Yeah. So if we remove one, if we remove one uh, from, from from next budget. year's budget, and and yet uh, warrant do a warrant article for at least two, then we then we've still got five, you know, essentially then we still have five um, right. slots. So and and that would um, you know get so that would be an, you know eleven thousand yeah. uh, three hundred and five dollars. Yeah. yeah, I mean I would even be I think from mm -hmm. looking at the number that seems like there's less mm -hmm. movement. Like drastic from mm -hmm. that first year. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't, we could almost get away with four. I almost think, but at so four perhaps five, even perhaps yeah, even removing two. two from the contingency, yeah. or one and, and a half. Uh, that makes me a little nervous. And after this next year, when you put another two into mm -hmm. a warrant article mm -hmm. and load that, then I would say yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, but if you know, just remember that every move in we get costs us eleven thousand three hundred dollars. So. You know, just three move-ins is thirty-three thousand dollars. So, yeah, and, and you can't predict that. We've right. Had, As a matter of fact, we've had we've had three. I think we've had three leave there since since the beginning of this year. Yeah. So it, the same thing. Three three could come. Yep. Right. But but, but right. they could go as well. And, so and so that's why we have to. Yeah. In, in in my last district, we tuitioned all the high school kids out, and you know we had years where it was down three kids, four kids enrollment. And then I had one rogue year that I had a dozen kids move in. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if it doesn't it usually happen, happen. it doesn't yeah. usually happen. Yeah, it but it can but happen. if it happens, it's coming out of your grade school because there's no other place to take it from. The first year we went, it was like first year. 10 or 11 students, right? I think we had. And that it doesn't wasn't usually happen. Yeah. We, had, we had to freeze the wrong. We had to freeze the wrong school, we did. grade school budget. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay, fair, fair. I think taking one out makes sense. Mm -hmm. Does it? I, okay. It feels safe to me, but it's hard. To, you're right. We don't know. We yeah. have no. Yeah, and then so let's keep that in mind. We, have, we do another warrant mm -hmm. um, So we're we trying to have a backup of five. Is that the goal? That was our fund? original yeah. goal. I think goal. that's. I think that's good. So do you want to so take one want out to now, or do you want to just keep it in mind? I mean, you're not done tonight anyway, so... We're not done tonight. We're we could, we, start with this one. Yeah. We could take so one let's, out. Let's take one out and see where we remember where, 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 where that is. Unless we say that and then <laughs> make sure we have a total influx. Well, yeah, that's, that, that's the thing. So, we'll, so we'll, let's see where we end up yeah. with some of this, too. So. Okay. Um, as you go down through, you've got you know, all your general supplies, math, reading, art, PE, um, reference books and things. Um, in, in developing this budget, we really didn't tell Rich uh, to limit it, to come in flat, to anything. It was basically talk to the teachers, see what they need, and, and get it in the budget. So, at least in my conversations and jump in any time with Rich, is that it, it pretty much has everything that the teachers have requested. We had talked originally about trying to stay flat mm -hmm. within reason, and I calculated after all of the requests that we were down 23 yeah. bucks yeah. Mm -hmm. without you know any discussion with teachers. You know, I just asked them to be reasonable about their requests and. You know, some lines are up a little bit, some are down based on what we need this year. And, you know, I thought they did a good job about being reasonable. It's too bad you couldn't get a little closer than $23. <laughs> I'm sure I can find some. $22.95. There's always a complaint. Something on sale. Find some sales. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, second page, you, you move into your, your technology, equipment, replacement. Um, and so on, and then your new equipment going through, which appears to be mostly decreases for new equipment. And I can speak to that because Tom and I talked, and we've done a lot of technology upgrades mm -hmm. over mm -hmm. the past two or three years, even before I got here. And we're at a point now where we've got new equipment, 
um, in our building. So the replacement piece is up a little bit, um, and that's mainly because of costs of items that we're replacing are a little bit higher. It's not that we're replacing more this year. Um, okay. But well, right we have now, a we have a regular replacement plan, I believe, right? We have a yes. So yeah. So and that, and that will, will always be in the budget, hopefully. Yep. Twenty percent each year of um, the iPads, the teacher mm -hmm. computers, and the student laptops is what he does each year. Okay. So, so we look for a five-year five-year five five year roll of yeah. technology. Okay. Good. That makes sense. Uh, I'm going to swing back to the first page for a minute because one of the discussions that we had that is not in here is that additional uh, PE teacher. Yes. That is not in the budget right oh, I, now, so I, I asked Rich if he would speak to that a little bit. Yep. Not an additional teacher, additional, okay. additional, additional, additional time. time. Additional time. Additional time for physical education. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'm a former phys ed teacher, you know, having phys ed five days a week for an hour and a half would be great. Um, but, you know, some things to consider are when you add a day, that adds 45 minutes of class time each week, which then we as a staff need to look at what are we taking away on that day? What are the kids not going to do that day in order to get PE? Um, we do have 45 minutes of recess that we could take away that day in lieu of phys ed, but I would hesitate to do that because some of our kids really need that time, independent time, um, rather than structured PE time. You know, one way or another, they're going to get movement and exercise and socialization and all of those important things. But it's the independence and you know free play time that you know for young kids is pretty important on a daily basis. So if we don't take away recess time, it would then be going back to the teachers and saying, what are we going to take out for 45 minutes in order to put in another day of PE? And we just haven't, I haven't brought that discussion to the teachers at all. Part of the impetus uh, for, for asking about uh, additional physical education time has to do with the new wellness policy that has come down to us. <laughs> And knowing that they want more, the feds, the state, all of us apparently want more movement and, and children being more active during the day. So perhaps, and, and I think part of that policy is forming a committee and going through things. So, so rather than, I, I'd rather that we don't rush into anything, that we work with on the school on this to find ways where, where we can meet those needs or, or, or come up with ways to add um, Activity because I don't know what do, what do you guys feel about it? Yeah, I like the idea of potentially adding another day mm. of PE or you know outside time or however that mm. that shakes out. I know we used to have it every day a while ago. Um, so yeah, it was, a couple of years. Yeah, and then it went to I think three days. Was it? I think what it comes down is not maybe necessarily the number of days that physical ed education is, but how many physical education classes a child gets in a week. Um, I mean, I, I would argue that two would, should be a minimum for every child to have two days of PE in an elementary school. That would be a minimum. Um, and I see other people nodding. And I don't think they're getting that now. Mm -hmm. They are well, getting two. Every, chi every child every day is getting, oh, every week is getting two. Yes, Depending except on how because we schedule PE on Mondays and Fridays, it gets knocked a lot with our schedule. Um, because Mondays are holidays, Fridays are workshop days. So it does get knocked a lot. But when we're in school for a full week, every child gets PE two days a week. So I guess my question would be, is it possible to change that uh, timing to Tuesdays and Thursdays? Um, or so I, I, I mean, I'm just asking. Yeah. Um, and again, it's not to. I, I, I don't know how the schedule. I'm sure you work. I know how hard scheduling is. I'm not. Uh, yeah. Not. not try, I'm not going to get involved in scheduling. But um, just the way that that, that we can be assured of children. Yeah. That's certainly 45 minutes of recess is a, yeah. a good yeah. solid activity. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As well. So on one hand, yeah. I don't necessarily know if the right answer is to get rid of that time as well. So 
Yeah, I don't, yeah, yeah maybe I, I, some more thought. Yeah, maybe yeah. some more thought. <laughs> and recess is outside too, which is important mm -hmm. yeah. when the weather is good. Mm -hmm. Right. To get outside for a while. At least you know, wherever the weather is, isn't it? Well, yeah, it used to be. It's <laughs> temperature. Oh, right? temperature is below right. 10 or something like that. 13. 13. Get out there, put a hat Feels on. Feels like 13 or above, they're outdoors. We cheated yesterday, it was 12. It was 13 at the sun. At the sun was out, at the sun was out. It used to be 10. Yeah. 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 That's cool. All right, I mean, I think, so, uh, um, so I'm hearing that, we, well, the board would like to have more. Uh, so maybe more thought needs to go into it, though, that we don't want to just try to mandate by throwing in. Well, I think it wouldn't hurt to maybe have a placeholder for it in the budget and going back to, you know, some of the feedback that we got at the mm -hmm. at the forum about parents wanting more PE and sports type activities. Uh, that seems to be a, a trend uh, coming from multiple directions that we should address if we can. So at least get an idea of what the cost yeah. is for another year. So do we... Do it's about $8,200. It's about $8,200, so $8,200. So I'd like to clarify one point from that public forum as a former physical teacher. Um, you know, a comment was made from a parent as a result of their child coming home, and um, you have to remember physical education is physical education, it's a class. And yes, you do do some sporting activities, but, you know, kids that are expecting soccer, basketball, baseball, as physical education, it's not that. And those kids that are in recreation programs that get that and are really good at it and need that, sometimes aren't mature enough to differentiate the difference between physical education and you know, recreational sports. Mm -hmm. um, the intramurals that have been started this year are similar. You know, they're not just soccer, basketball, baseball, that are activities for any kid. You know, that way they've got quite a few kids attending their first couple of intramural sessions, 20 or so. Oh, that's think. great. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Yeah. Um, and they're kids that are not typically athletes. They want to be active. They want to play games. They want to learn. That's good. So that's the one thing that I would just caution them. You know, as a principal, but also a former phys ed teacher, that we're looking at this, we want to make sure in the future that we publicize as an additional day of physical education, not sports. It's activity, it's raising your heart rate, it's being healthy, it's, but it's not competition. I, I, I fully support that. I was a physical educator, I call myself a movement educator, um, because uh, many, many parents complained as to why wasn't I teaching sports, no? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. It's not my job. <laughs> and we're going to stay inside in the gym uh, in the beginning of the year, too, just the way a classroom teacher doesn't take the first reading class out the first day in September. We're going to stay and we're going to learn some stuff. But, okay. I do like the Thank idea you. of it being part of the wellness committee discussion. Yeah. Uh, because if scheduling does come into it, the other thing you have to remember is all of our related arts teachers are part-time. And if we do move days, you might lose all of them yep. based on other jobs that they currently hold, mm -hmm. which, you know, we have to do what's best for the school first and foremost, mm -hmm. but replacing part-time people and some really quality part-time people that we have in the school could be extremely difficult. So it's just something to remember as we start looking at this stuff. Part of that wellness policy too, they have to, the committee is supposed to do a triennial assessment of the policy and yes. the goals and everything. So yes. that could be as one of your things to look into as your assessment goes forward, you know, mm -hmm. for them, a job for them to, to assess mm -hmm. and see what the needs are too. Because you have to do that as part of the policy. So it, it, it's to Aaron's point, I think, if we, if we added that into, um, into the budget, if we added uh, another day of something, that would help uh, help us reach the wellness policy's goals um, and then figure out what that is after the committee's form and start doing that. There's that that's possible too, I mean, right? I, mean, I think that's safe. It's not a, you know, it's not a huge sum. Um, and we've taken a student out, so. Right, right. But having it in there would allow us to, if we come to a decision, to, to make that happen. Right. Not fine, yeah. 
So would you like me to add that? I think we'll add that now. Yeah, just for well, and certainly, I guess, is the well. Just have, we'll see as we go along. But yeah, I mean, okay. this is, again, very, as you say, it's very preliminary. I'm sorry, Andrew, go ahead. I'm just saying, I guess, as you know, as the well, this wellness committee is formed, um, certainly the fact that the intramural should be playing a part of mm -hmm. that consideration mm -hmm. and evaluation mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. That's that's a huge piece as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Certainly. Especially if you're getting other students that not necessarily do active sports, it's great for them to be finding something that gets them moving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, back to the second page. Um, and I'll move down to the bottom. You start in with special education. Um, so you'll see down, way down the bottom, the tuition, uh, high school and middle school. Nancy and I went. Yeah, Nancy and I went through. She mm -hmm. did all the, you know, IEPs and everything. Costed them out. So these are based on current students that we have, and you know, the new ones coming in from the sixth grade as well. Mm -hmm. So. Those are all updated. Is this also the new number from yep. Marshwood? Yep. So that's that's included. all included. Yep, and that's also included in the back of the enrollment section, the related service tier. Okay. You know, the costs for each of the um, services. So those are in there for you to see as well. Okay. It's not any you know kids related. It's just what Marshwood charges for the service. Okay. okay. They didn't really increase that much. A few, a lot of them stayed the same that they are this year. A few, maybe a couple of dollars, mm -hmm. but nothing. Like, so one of the changes, one of the reasons, one of the reasons we see an increase in the um, high school students is that the tuition went up, because what always confuses me is this: this is not just the cost of special ed; it's the cost of basic tuition plus special ed. Correct? Right. So for every special yeah. ed student, their tuition, yeah. their base tuition, that eleven thousand dollars is yeah. built into this line plus the services. Right. That they so there was a, there's well. an extra seven hundred dollars yeah. or whatever plus yeah. per per student okay. in there. Yeah. So that's that. That's one of the reasons it looks like a, a pretty yeah. big jump, I think. Yeah. Well, and the middle school went down quite yeah. a bit, and that's, yeah. you know, kids moving in and out and changes. Mm -hmm. And again, the challenge is this is a snapshot in time. And right. Mm -hmm. if, if between now and the time you finalize the budget, somebody moves in or moves out, then we'll adjust those lines for it. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. On page three, um, not a lot of changes. The co-curricular down, what was that about? I reduced it. We looked at it last year because intramurals had not been taking right. place. Mm -hmm. um, so what I did was left eight sessions of intramurals in there. Okay. It's $160 per session that we pay somebody. Um, they have to do eight one-hour sessions. They get a $160 stipend. So there's eight in there. We currently have five throughout the year that are being offered with a possibility of two more in the middle of the year. So it, I think it still leaves enough for now. And if it grows even more, then we can add more and we'll back into it. Right, and we can, we can see, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's only so much time during the year to do them. And it's not every day. It's twice a week after school. So we try to avoid other activities like stuff. Uh, drama, drama, so. Okay. But this, but, but this, but you feel comfortable with this, is what you're saying? Yes. For next year, yeah, that one. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And the rest of that page, you move down to guidance, nurse services, or starting to go on to the next page. And you can jump out there, Katie. Uh, no, just the adaptive P. Yeah. That was another. Remember last year, for yeah. this current budget we're in, we decreased that. It used to be about $20,000. Yeah. We decreased it. Um, you know, for this current year to 5000 we cut 15 if you remember correctly, right before yeah. we sent the budget on last mm -hmm. year, and we reduced it another 2500 just because based on current, you know, needs. That's the only thing I have there. Yeah, we didn't, I don't believe we haven't spent No, we haven't. Okay, yeah, thank you. And the next page, you've got uh, the school board uh, salaries in there. Secretary of Services, brief static. And so at first I was confused at school board officer salaries, and then I realized it must include the clerk and the treasurer. Yes, it does. Yeah. <laughs> I said, wow. Yes, it does. That's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I think those used to be broken out, mm -hmm. and so it was like, oh, okay. I spent a little time on this page. Okay. And then you wanted to talk about legal too, right? 
on yes, the bottom. Yes, but I also want to talk about um, school board secretary services. Yeah. I, um, I know that um, I, I, is what we have budgeted here right now enough? I know we're over that for uh, last year. Yep, but you also had we additional had a lot of meetings, meetings because of withdrawal mm -hmm. and those types of things. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so the twenty four hundred is based on your once a month meetings. That's what it's mm -hmm. based on. Plus all the budget meetings. Yeah, so those enough. types of things. So. I mean, I don't anticipate, I mean, once the withdrawal's done, you know what I mean, you won't have yeah. any of those extra type of meetings. We still so. have a, a couple of withdrawal meetings. I mean, I can certainly add some if I mean, you would I, like. I, I, I would feel comfortable with a little bit more than that. Okay. Like maybe going up to, uh, it, well, just for a lot of reasons. I mean, mm -hmm. just, um, and, and I'm not even I'm not even sure what the what our hourly rate is. If we it's have a stipend, rate. yeah. It's just a stipend. Yeah, it's $150 a meeting. Oh, okay. Plus the time to write off the minutes and things. Right, that, that way we're not on the whole process will take, right? Yeah. And we may. So do you want me to add a few meetings in there? I would add, I would add a few more meetings. Okay. Um, 27. Yeah, I, I think that's a, but let's, let's do 27. Okay. I just want to make sure that we yep, don't have to cover that. And then uh, down under legal services, um, uh, Andrea, Aaron, you may remember we increased our budget this last year yep. um, yes. for, for this year yep. uh, because of all the things that were going on. And we, um, I, I think we, I would feel comfortable dropping that because um, at this point um, we have contracts that we're going to be looking at already. Um, I, I, I can't, it looks like things are going to be, Reasonably good for you know, so it would be done. Everything will be done <laughs> don't say it too in much. this school year. Yeah, right. I don't. I, it, but it still should be covered in this school year. Yeah, Th that's the whole point. Right. So, so, so we, I, yeah. I, I don't anticipate that we would need anywhere near that amount for right. uh, for for the next school year. The next There's school nothing year. looming that would take that that I can see yeah. <laughs> that, that would require <laughs> <For> uh, <laughs> that would require that kind of legal. We do. We do. I mean, two years before that, it was a you know four thousand. Yeah, it was under five thousand. So I mean, I would be, I, I would feel comfortable uh, cutting that in half. Yeah, I agree. Yes, okay. yes, I agree. Okay. Um, just a note on page six: the SAU assessment is flat right now because the SAU budget has not been passed yet. So. Yes. Flat there right now, but when, when you all go home and look at your uh, green packets, it, it will be going up. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll deal with that on Monday mm -hmm. and the adjustments and will we'll be adjust made. It. Yep. Yeah. And uh, you've got uh, on that page, you got school administration and all the uh, appropriate expenses there. Those are stayed pretty uh, static along the way. Liability insurance for Primex, is that an That's actual? an actual rate. That's yep. an actual rate? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Primex we lock in usually for two years. Yeah, so right. So, so this, is this, yeah. this is the second, second year, year, right? Yep. I mean, this coming year is yep. the second year. Yep. Anything on that page? The next page should generate some discussion. Well, yes, it is, because the, <laughs> the first thing I want to know is what is the remote lift for the backboard? Does that mean you can do it from home? <laughs> Push the button and the backboards go. Mm. <laughs> Not quite that. Almost, but well, you probably could get a program. No, what the remote lift will do is, is it's a motorized instead of cranking it. So we still have to crank. No, it no, would not be cranking. No, no, no. We still do now. Yes. Even with the newer. Okay. Yes. I, I wasn't sure we still do with the new backboards. It, it speeds up the process. Uh, and as we get older, it's a uh, risk management multiple. Hey, those sixth graders need to get more <laughs> exercise. <laughs> you could write that into your wellness policy. Right. Crank the backboard up. So increase the liability. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, okay, that, that was just a question on that. Thank you. Okay, we had some discussion yesterday on water and sewer. Yes. Um, I, I, I'm going to rec uh, recommend it again. With, uh, so we know that water and sewer will be doing some work uh, we expect outside next year, replacing mains, and that uh, some of the recommend 
and, and we know that that's going to cost every rate payer, or at least that's how they're planning on doing it now, every rate payer. So I think that we should raise um, that we should raise that three thousand eight hundred dollars to at least four thousand dollars because they anticipated it was going to be about a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars a rate payer. I believe. I think that's correct. So I, I would. I would recommend at least going up to four thousand. What, what I mean, you also heard a lot of what they said. What do you think? Yeah, I just think that would probably for next be year. the minimum mm. um, because if if it gets pushed off until next year, it will likely be higher than what they've mm -hmm. estimated thus far. But we don't have any way of knowing what that will be. Um, and would it, should we go to uh, four thousand two hundred and fifty? I mean, should we? Uh, I, mean, I realize it's not a lot, but it's, it's good to have. Um, yeah, I think that I think that would be safe. Um, I would imagine that rates will go up a little bit either way. Mm -hmm. um, just based on the the trends of how things are going. Um, so I think it would be safe to increase it a little bit more than the two hundred. Okay. Did you have a comment to add that? Well, if and when they redo the line on Willie Street, they'll also be, we're going to be required to change our line. Not Re sure how required? much that's going to be. Okay. We are going to be required. Okay, okay. so and I see and that is further that down here. Yeah. That is further down yeah. here. That's the requirement. And they'll also be changing our meter, which is the one we have in there is very antique and probably not very accurate. So we're probably getting. 1936. <laughs> it, could, it could very well be. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a pretty old one when the fellow was doing the uh, backflow mm -hmm. check uh, a few weeks ago. He was telling me how old he thinks that is. Like so it's probably I have to find out. It's pretty old, but it's probably not very accurate. So when they put it a meter on, very possibly our uh, rate could rate of usage could jump dramatically. It, it, so then, just, just to let, and we we are higher than a, we probably use more than a normal house. If they're saying the house is going to go up two hundred dollars, how much are we going to go up? Yeah. Now, for for for, for the for the two hundred dollars I was mentioning, they were not do, they were not basing it on usage. They were going to make every ratepayer pay a certain amount, a, 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 a flat portion. That's how they were planning on doing. It. I don't know. I don't know. Now that it's been, it has been officially put off um, oh, okay. until, uh, until next um, next year doing the work, so I don't know how they might plan to do it. So right. it sounds like we should definitely go up. Should we go up to like 4,500? Well, I don't know what other, I mean, I, I think it would hurt. <laughs> okay, then, let, then let's put it up to 45. Yes, yes. Yeah, but we know it's going up. That, that's, that's about all we know. Okay. The other question I have in that section, the oil, do you, do you think oh, yeah, what do you, yeah, what do you mean? How are we doing on oil? I mean, the two years prior, 22, a little over 25. So. It all depends on what the price of oil goes up to. Right now, our uh, gallon inch has kind of leveled off. We're about under, uh, under, under 9,000 gallons a year now. So we've dropped about 3,000 from years past. So I mean, it does depend on what the price of the oil is. Yeah, that's where it over, over the right. rack, so. Yeah. I'm just wondering if we raise that to 26, 26 or 27. Let's see, so the actual for this last year was almost 26. So, yeah, I think we should go up to, and, and of course there's no telling what weather's going to be. We've gotten cold weather much earlier mm -hmm. than, than we've expected. I would feel comfortable going up to at least maybe 27.5. I don't, 20, what, are, what are people, I don't know. These, these are all guesses. I guess it's so hard to tell right now the prices are good, but who knows. Yeah. I usually use the uh, degree days yep. to figure out exactly how much. And degree days the past few years have stayed constant, even with, yeah. even with the fluctuations yeah. of the real cold days and real warm. Really? The total degree days have stayed very consistent the past couple of years. Well, I would say at least 26 then. Yeah, because that would bring us up to last year. It, it, how do people feel about that? Okay. 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 Then down the bottom, you'll see uh, a number of uh, maintenance 
items. We've got a $40,000 marker in there for the piping from Locust Street, if need be. Now, um, is that based on some research you've done, Dick, or just some? I haven't gotten a number, an yeah. actual number yet. I mean, if I thought I could get back to me on. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a possibility, depending on which way, um, where we want to enter the, the water, we can come off of, uh, we could come off of Locust Street and come adjacent to the line that we use for the fire department. We could cut through our, which I'd rather not, is cut through where we are now. We could go up Willie Street just a little bit to, on the other side of the entrance of the uh, bus loop and come through the front and only really cut through the walkway up a little bit and come through Lanza's uh, classroom into where it's coming in now. Or we could come in down this corner here and, and cut through just a little bit by the entrance. So, so there are options. Yeah, it's... it's, it's now, and, and the one thing we don't know, and I know that uh, some people have asked the, um, the, the Water Commission this, is that when they're doing the... they're hoping to use this new method that does no trenching. And if they did that, and if the same company w would then do the, would, might then give us a price, because they're here already, to, to exchange the line. So, I mean, again, there's so much unknown. Yeah, we need to have more information yes. before we go much farther. But, yeah. but, but at we the moment, we have a $40,000 placeholder. I, I think that's a good, good start. Because okay. there is a lot of digging and well, yeah. I mean, I, I think it, 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 you know, I, I have no, I have no. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. And we'll be getting more information. I mean, we're working towards getting more information. So. Yeah. If we'll get more information, and hopefully the water commission will have a better, have a have hold a full planning meeting with some of the, especially a, a big stakeholder where we might have to spend this kind of money to do something like that. I think we have to leave that in. Um, curbing for the parking lot. Um, are you talking about curbing like on the, where grassy, grassy areas are and things? Right, or? along the edge. What's, what's happening here is it seems like, I, um, more so on this, uh, the, north, the north side of the building, the, uh, we've added that parking over there. And sometimes now it's like the cars pulling out, go over the main lawn. Trucks are running over it. They're coming in for the um, morning program and the afternoon program, and they all seem to, I, you know, I fill it in and they run it over the, they run it over the grass. Yeah. Uh, so, so I have a question. I mean, doesn't doesn't it make plowing more difficult if there's curbs? It depends what type of curbing. Like the curbing we're using is, I think they call it Cape Cod, oh, and yeah. it's not as pronounce it's more of an it's angle. more about yeah it's just a slight angle so it really yep. doesn't affect the plow. Okay, so that would be a cape cod i don't know about this from the planning board oh my god my time there was not wasted <laughs> okay it would just neaten up everything because if you during the daytime you can see where the, the cars and everything are running over uh, the front so eventually once we get curving and then we can really then the next step would be working on the actual landscape actually have grass instead of crabgrass up there. So that was a question. Um, I also have a question on the on the storage shed. Uh, of, so we, we built a pretty big new shed uh, just a little while ago. So are we everywhere out of space? We still have some items upstairs in the attic that probably need to come out sooner rather than later. The drama department has, a, has an exorbitant amount yeah. of props. And that will not fit in the shed that we have. What they have is, is I would say, a third of the cla this classroom would, it would fill a third of this. And where are those third. props right now? Hmm? Where are those props right now? They are in the attic. Okay. And, and, and we need to get that stuff out of there. We definitely do. And you guys because did a nice job prior to me getting here. Because? Why do we have to get them out of there? I'm just curious. I really, this is just a curiosity question. Well, we have a lot of things above where we work. And, you know, the other piece is, is are those things supposed to be there? So if we did a full inspection, is, is it going to pass?
pass inspection, or are they going to say, you need to empty this? And if we empty it, it's either throwing it out or finding a place to store it. Some of the things we need to store, and some we just need to take the time to go through and decide what can go. Okay, so, so it's essentially a safety measure of not having things stored where they should not be stored. Is that and it's hard to access. We, we it is hard to access. We can't have our you know, drama club folks going up and down the stairs into the attic to get things we have to do in production. It's not safe. Yeah, that's understood. So, so what's, the, what's the thought on this shed? Where, where would it be? And I mean, it's, it's going to take up space, right? Yeah, not as big. It's not as big. I wasn't envisioning something as big as what we have. Well, no, it's not. It's not the same cost. Yeah. I'm assuming it's not as big. Yeah, maybe a third or a quarter of the size. Possibly, you know, it, it all depends on, on how much can be weeded out of what's there. Number one, um, you could get a portable. They did have a portable here at one point mm -hmm. before we built. Mm -hmm. Something maybe that size, if you can get everything in one and it's all in one, mm -hmm. it would be better off. We were renting the other one, it was exorbitant cost. We could probably buy one much cheaper. Mm -hmm. And then it's movable in the future. Mm -hmm. It's usually waterproof and secure. And it's used, you know, we're storing stuff that's used for two nights. Well, that's uh, uh, and, you know, I mean, that's always a problem. I mean, yeah, I, I, mean, I, 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 know, I don't want to. Do, I don't want to belittle <coughs> the production, so to speak. And it's very nice, and, it, and it's a big community thing. But it does take up a lot of space when we're saving um, backdrops and whatnot from past production. And there's no, there's no more room in the current. It's getting, uh, it's starting, it's getting pretty, it's getting full. Um, I'm hoping I put some things in there, hopefully it's going to put additions of cans in the room. We can get rid of the cans that they have in the classroom. That takes up almost a whole, uh, oh, so, yeah, so that was another question about, so, so that will, that would free up free floor up. space, but also storage space. Right, because right now I have to store that. Mm -hmm. They take up uh, probably a space that's as wide as mm -hmm. the two tables together. Yeah in about 10 feet mm -hmm. of, <coughs> of just fans, of, of, of just, standing fans. Of just those types of fans. Yes, because I saw that you had uh, classroom fans here somewhere. Ceiling fans. And the other piece with that, inspectors don't like seeing cords on the floor very often, so you're limited when you have a fan that's plugged in for your classroom where you put it because you can't have the cord going across the floor and have the kids stepping over or tripping over, so it's sort of a safety issue. But without the fans right now on those, you know, May, June days and some of those September days, it is oppressive in those rooms. Okay. So the current shed has room for the fans right now. I have them in the, yeah, I have them yeah. stored in the, in the shed in the, in the but I have to kind of leave that space open for there, when they, and when they come out, i got to leave it open because you can't fill it with something else because the fans have to go back in there. But that's not enough, it, would that be enough space not to build a, uh, not to have a new shed? Uh, that would not take all the all equipment, no. The other large amount of things up there that we plan on working with our PTO is prior to the new PTO that started up last year, they stored their things up there too. So there's years of decorations and items that were used for fundraisers. I, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's, it, anyway, it, it's a tough one, but... Um, it, it, would it be it, less expensive to build a proper set of stairs to make it, <laughs> I don't know... To make it a safe, proper storage. To make right? it a proper storage. Right? We could probably get an engineering firm that could tell us how much it yeah, you have stairs on both sides. But then we, if that was to happen, we could possibly make that into usable space for other things. But I don't think that's going to be cheap either. I mean, yeah, we're talking, right now it's $5,000 for a shed, and I, I, I like the idea of something that's portable and sellable if we, if we have, end up opening up a lot of space somewhere else. And right. Get rid of it. But it's a, okay. Uh, let, let's, uh, let's keep looking at all of this. <laughs> One of the pieces you'll want to talk with Dick about tonight is the 
plans for the ventilation system. Yes. Down there. So it's it, it, our way down to that. Um, all window shades. For right now, um, we don't have any over on um, this mm -hmm. end of the building at all. Mm -hmm. The shades, uh, on the other side, are getting really. I have a number of them that already have to be replaced, and they're getting pretty much shady. I'll speak for a missing member, Tom. Um, who, 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 it, it's sort of one of his pet peeves, oh, yeah. uh, so we'll just make sure that's in the record here tonight. <laughs> so are, are you talking about putting shades in here as well as replacing all of yes, them? Yes, there are these shades in the whole building. Isn't that, uh, okay. that Do we not have classroom smoke detectors? There are none in the classrooms. Is it a requirement? It is not a requirement. When they when it, they did the uh, when they did put that new system in, which is now probably 14, 15 years old, the uh, the cover code you only needed one, which had to be right above. The, uh, if you don't know the history, that's uh, it was code because I checked on it because I couldn't <laughs> believe we only had one here, and it is code. And what they were using is they're using the um, sprinkler system as a activation for the fire alarm system. Mm -hmm. So there's a big difference in time delay between mm -hmm. a smoke alarm and one of these mm -hmm. sprinklers going off. Because that's heat detection. Right? That's heat. Versus smoke. And what happens is that has to melt and then, then it goes off and it changes the water pressure down in the, down the boiler room, activates the fire alarm, which then takes three or four minutes before, five minutes before the fire department actually gets here. So the fire is pretty, it would be pretty intense on that. Yep. A couple of years ago, I put some fire uh, smoke alarms in the kitchen, the boiler room, uh, the copy rooms, main office, uh, places that if the fire, those Broke are places out, yeah. that we would not that these aren't the more important. And still one, this one had one. All the classrooms at one point before had them in here. Every classroom did have a smoke detector in it before. Okay. And, and when they were here putting the ones I added on, I was able to get them to retie in the ones that are in the attic in above the gym. So those are now activated. So those actually were. So the ones we see are hardwired. Yes. Okay. And is this so? But this says so. Um, so these are for additional. Smoke detectors. These would be the ones that are not in classrooms that I'd like to put in classrooms. Yeah. They're not required. But and code hasn't changed, but yeah. Understood. Just a just needed understanding. Thank you. Board with us. So the ventilation system. Getting a so talk to us about the ventilation system. Or lack thereof. I don't have the latest uh, reports with, with me on the uh, air quality that we do have. I do remember that it is borderline. The air quality is borderline uh, on a very high end. Uh, there will be a few options when we get the plans made up which way we want to go. Uh, I don't know, we really know what information you really want from that. Well, I guess... Um, but, I mean, they have to, the plans have to be drawn up, then they have to go, then we have to set it up to bid, and then pour an article on, on that. Um, but right now, it would probably be a two or three year project. Mm -hmm. We'd probably do one side one year, and then uh, similar to how we had to do the electricity, electricity mm -hmm. and, uh, Mm -hmm. And the other thing is that it would be so you'd be looking for a warrant article that would do part of it, and then we in in uh, what would that be twenty one twenty two? Yeah, right. Because this war this would take care of this coming year for planning, and then it would be the following. Right, we get the plans, and then we have to yeah. and the plans would go out on an RFP to see how much yeah. it's actually going to cost us to do it. So the fifteen. Fifty thousand covers the plans. That covers the plans. That's the detailed plans in, in two, I think two or three options 
on how we can go with that. And will you be getting um, at least some um, um, estimates from more than one uh, group, uh, more than one uh, engineering firm to do the plans? We can do that before we get the plans. Yes, but yeah, that, 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 that amount will cover. That would cover getting the, to whoever we get. Whoever we get. And now, and and I and I believe in big numbers. It's on there for like it, it, it's on the big uh, uh, capital improvement plan for at least four hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. It's probably gone because up because those those are from those are old numbers. Those are from like seven or eight years yeah, ago. Yeah, you're probably looking at five to, to, to yeah. six hundred thousand. And I believe there's at least uh, one other item, which is the boil uh, the heating system as well. Is that true? That's going to that's about that same cost. It's in the same time frame to be done. Or um, just, just trying to get an idea of what's coming up. I think when they were doing the that study, that was changing everything. And I think that was also changing all the heat um, registers and everything in the classrooms and repiping it when they had that big number. Yes. Um, okay. So that was a complete renovation. Okay. Kind of separating, probably separating it and going into an automation system so that each room had control. Right now, we're we'll in the main building. There are four thermostats and they control three or four rooms on, similar to a house would mm -hmm. control your downstairs and your upstairs and whatnot. The rooms on this side are automated to an extent that each room has its own thermostat and, and they can control their heat from here as opposed to the main building where it has a thermostat controls the heat from the other three rooms. So one room could be five, one room could be so, so bottom line is, is is that somewhere? How far down the line are we looking at that for for sort of an overhaul of boilers and or heating system? I would think you could probably be a good three to, three to five years after the renovation. Okay. You know, the boilers seem to be operating fine. Thank you for that, because they were not until you came here. Yeah, they're not going to seem to have any issues. No one's complaining about the heat, it's so cold. Okay, well, I just wanted to get an idea of what, I mean, of what we were looking at. Uh, okay. The equipment itself, I think, is okay. The equipment itself is breaching the space gap on the smoke. Uh, I was trying to wait till you did a boiler, but I think that's going to have to be done, but that's not as expensive as so. it. That can be used in between. All right, so, no, go ahead. Um, so this detailed plan for the ventilation system, that's strictly addressing air quality? It's yes. not really tying in anything with the heating? No, that's okay. just the air quality. Yeah. Okay, so we've had our heat, our air quality measured, and it's... Yes, I had a couple of, you know, a year. Some of that's the volume too of air. You're not you're not transferring the volume of air through the through the um, the classrooms, uh, which is not uncommon in some of these old buildings. It's not necessarily the, the quality. That there's something bad in the air. It's just a matter of you're not changing it over. So you're not taking out. I mean, people are breathing all the time. The CO2 there. levels are on the high end. Yeah. Because they're breathing out. <laughs> we didn't tell them to stop. <laughs> we're just breathing in. They're breathing out. You have CO2 levels that are high, some particulate levels that are also high. Uh, you can come in here and you can see dust particles with the, the rays of sun coming in. It's, it's, um, a, very, so it, it's, it's a very important, important issue. I, I mean, certainly, I, I know that um, I, ha I had one put in my house for the winter, um, just simply because you know, my partner is asthmatic and you know, a bad asthma attack is not a good thing to have. So. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. It's, yeah. All right. So let's get keep keeping going on down here. And I see that the um, so the ceramic tiles we have all the corridors done now, correct? Correct. But apparently not the steps. Um, there were more the landings. The landings. The okay. landings. Uh, that's kind of optional. Mm -hmm. It would be nice to do them. It mm -hmm. doesn't have to get done. It'd be nice to do those. The steps should be done. Going into the main and down and get new stair treads 
similar to what we have on the main stairs going down uh, both stairways. So, so that's all right. So the landings stairs. So the, I see they're broken up into um, gym to annex and then the uh, main building. We did that on purpose, just in yeah. case you know we wanted to take one out and put it off for another year. Plus, for you folks to be able to see each yeah. project's cost. Mm -hmm. And and I think I, I would suggest postponing um, maybe the larger, maybe the um, the main building one. The main building that's the ones on the two ends, right? And the and the front entrance. Is that what it is? Those three stairways, mm -hmm. the two end stairways on the main building, the main entrance. Which makes sense because they're, you know, they're, they're at least a the stairs are uh, more expensive than ever. That's a free I see that. Yeah, <laughs> just the stair treads themselves are really expensive. Mm -hmm. So the only thing expensive is the, those stair treads. But they do call it, they have Jeez. a long, uh, they last a long time. They have a good time where you and, and so just looking at, we're about to run out of time and have to go into our next meeting, but. Um, so looking down, some of the other things there are the um, just, the doors. Just so, for clarification, yeah, before you go off that, that, are we removing anything? Well, I, I, well, I, I wanted to get a sense of priority from a, a, a safety. So, so I mean, so the, the 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 tile, ceramic tile, is not a safety measure. It's a, it's a little more. It's more work not having it, I assume, and it'd be great to have it done. Correct. I mean, I and I. The yeah. stair treads would be more of a uh, would be more of a need. Safety-wise, the treads would be correct, and we could separate that out of the, out of that. Uh, the treads, not the landings. Right, we could separate that out. Of the and do you have any idea what the uh, cost is then on just doing the treads? Uh, I have it right downstairs. I have it. Uh, All right. Well, let's look. I at have the proposal. The proposal gives me the price of what the stair treads are. Okay. Well, let's look at pricing. Uh, pricing up, replacing that with just the treads. Okay. Because then, as we look down at replacement doors, um, internal doors, magnetic locks, replacement uh, replacement locks, um, and the upgrade for magnetic locks, can you speak quickly? Is, is that a um, a safety measure? Is it a uh, convenience measure? It's a safety and security, security. more so than anything else. Mm -hmm. um, and you know the doors that are in the gym, there's four doors. Mm -hmm. uh, they're all pretty old and in rough shape. Uh, they would be the next doors that would be, be changed while we're changing them to make them uh, up to code, fire, fire rated, okay. and um, egress. There's a, there's a special egress. Yes. Um, <coughs> No, the mecha the mechanism for getting out, uh, yeah, rather need, than yes, you yeah. need a crash bar, which are not on any of those doors, right, I believe. The crash bar, okay. uh, and that way there we can segregate or uh, separate the building into yeah. areas yeah. and just secure the gym from the main building, um, yeah. so that you can have access to the gym, you can have access to the main building. Yeah. We could put some. Uh, we're looking at maybe putting a small wall with the door in here in the annex so that the annex and the classrooms are all self separated. I am very much in favor. I, I believe that's a very big safety issue. I mean, it's safety and um, security. Security. Yeah, so that, those things are in there. Uh, those all have to be fire rated doors. Yeah. Um, then we have glass, have uh, aluminum bottoms, have glass pipes. We have to crash. And a crash part of the crash. And so, and, and so the magnetic locks. Well, that's part of the that's, all. that's part of that system that all oh, tied into that. Okay. On top of it. You know, the system, the, the magnet, the lock system is all completely separate from the doors themselves. And so those are additionals to the doors. You guys have any questions on those? Well, I, I just would find helpful if we could prioritize, you know, prioritize what you see or you know. Mm -hmm. You we, all see. We've done that. Okay, so as we've it's listed that. here, no, no. So I, so I guess if we have to make some choices and decisions, I, I kind of want to, the experts, yeah. what's safe, what you know, safety. We can, we can obviously. Yeah. <coughs> Thanks. Yeah, that'd be good. And, and then the last big item on there is the 
gym windows. So. And I'd like a little bit of some input on that because I envision different things. And, and uh, I, I, I see the gym windows as a big key glass. But I also see it as part of the integrity of the building itself. So it's, it's both heating it and keeping it um, The south side of the building, how we want to see is, I would like to make those windows, I'd like to put some of that in the smaller windows on Yeah, really straight, you want to see it. We live that for time to keep that the integrity of what the And I, I think it's possible that might be something we'll postpone, so that we, so that we can have yeah, these conversations. Right. So we may not we, we, we may remove it from this yeah, budget and open the conversations to so we go forward. Yeah. So we down. As long as it's not a priority that something has to happen to the windows of the building. So, okay. so, so uh, how does the board feel about having like taking that out right now for now for, yeah. for input later on? The gym yeah. How do you feel? I think that's a good one. Okay. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll be starting the meeting shortly. All right, continuing on the equipment maintenance on the next page, and the transportation. So the transportation, this is your, the next year will be your last year of your regular ed. Special ed, we're going, we did send out an RFP, I reported, we only got one response back, so we're sending it back out for another round to see if we can get more responses back, so. Do, do, do we often get more than one? Hasn't it always been doing? Well, we didn't get one from our current provider, so we were a little oh. concerned about that. So yeah. we're going to send it back out to see if maybe okay. we can get at least another one to okay. compare to. Okay. Transportation's um, often tricky. Yeah. We know how difficult that is, but we, we know that we <laughs> yeah. only get one for our regular But for special ed, Nancy has gone through. There is a you know a substantial increase there for special ed transportation. That's just based, on, that based on students the... that we have that have the needs. Okay. Um, it's not based on an increase for the contract or anything like that. It's just for current you know, student needs. Um, I left after school the same. It's it's been running around the same. So I left that flat. Um, and then the last page is a lot of decreases. Those were the retirements yeah. from last year that we don't have this year. I did increase the transfer and food service from 2000. We have to make food service whole yep. every year. Yep. Remember? Yes. It's been running over every year, so I increased it by a little bit. Oh, just thank to, you. Yeah, you that know, was... Add a little bit more there. And then the decrease for the transfer that was made for 97000 Those were the Warren articles from last mm -hmm. year. Okay. All right. So I, I, know that, I know that we've uh, taken out more than we've added. So we'll have to see what the next yep. round it looks like. Um, any general questions, thoughts at this point? Just a quick question back to the um, maintenance items. I know there's some question right now about those um, the faucets that had test issues. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if there should be kind of a contingency in here in case more work needs to be done after the next round of testing. Yeah, I have testing. I have one that I'm working on at a time. So I'm waiting for the required results to come back from mm -hmm. that. Uh, and I was taking a buck one too, so I've got to possibly get you some numbers yeah. on what we might have to do. That will be taken, we, we expect that to be all handled this year though, correct? I'm hoping. Yeah, uh, but to Aaron's point, that I understand. Should, should, should we put anything in next? Uh, Especially with changing possibly other know, things. But I should know more by the end of the month. I okay. Got, I got. I have. I brought a sample down to the state. So if that one passes in, I'm assuming that what I did to the first one in one in two oh one oh five will work in one oh six and one oh eight. Uh, with the water so. Yeah. So we had talked if, if um, a full replacement had to be done because of the savings on this year's budget, because of the work we did in the spring. We've got a little bit of money in his maintenance repairs this year. Yeah. 
that would cover it if it got yeah, to that point. Yeah, I'd have to see how much I'd have to do uh, possible new piping, and then I'd have to get a little plumbing in and see what we'd have to actually yeah. do after that. So I'm, I'm hesitant to, to want to put a lot of money, but I'm, it's an important mm -hmm. issue. But where they take their drinking water from our, uh, there is none detected in any of our water fountains. Right. So uh, almost every child here has a water bottle in their constant filament. So, uh, there's a concern, but I do not over concern at this particular thing. Yeah. And hopefully, like you said, we can address it this year if we need to. Yeah, in this sure. budget. Mm -hmm. And depending on what you get back, it, that'll still give us time. Uh, if you, yeah, if you can get by the it, end of this month. Know, a couple of them were not, were pretty close. They weren't terrible. But some of it might have been because the water had set in the summer. Mm -hmm. as it blew, so it took mm -hmm. more of the tests. So we'll see what the, the last one is. And I know the state water people that I spoke to said that it's, it's very often the fixtures themselves. So. I've changed the fixture. So I know you've changed the fixture in there twice. So if it's, if it's, we'll see what happens. A lot, of, a lot of work. Just one thing real quick. Yep. Revenue. Yes. We're still waiting for the state to send us their estimates. It's supposed to be tomorrow. So okay. that, that will be updated for the next round as well. But right now they're just flat because we don't have they're to flat. All right. So in general, we are expecting special ed costs to go up. Oh. No. No, it, it, no. Special ed is now, oh, we've already done for next year. Yep. We're done. Okay. Yep. Um, so it's so really it is just revenue that could change at this point. Yeah, and all the changes, changes plus the changes yeah. we just made. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you all for all your work. Dick, thank you guys for being here this evening. Thank you. Uh, round one. Yeah. We're going to take about a two or three minute break. We're going to rearrange the tables, get our student reps up here, and uh, then we'll get started. Judy Nelson? Yes. Tom Coons? Excused. Emily Leach? Excused. Andrea Anderson? Here. Aaron Cavanaugh? Here. Barbara Kodomsky? Here. Melinda Sullivan? Oh, okay. Okay. Just the board, thank you very much. Uh, we'll stand for the pledge, please. There's a flag in this corner. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome. We'll open it with comments from visitors. Please state your name uh, very clearly, please, for, uh, for our uh, secretary. So comments by the visitors. Committee uh, minutes uh, from uh, early October. This our last, uh, our, our October 10th school board meeting. Our October 28th school board meeting. We had a short meeting that day, and then our the uh, sixth grade uh, forum minutes and enrollment. What is uh, what do you want to do about the consent calendar? You may move to accept, or you can I remove something from it. I move to accept. Calendar items. Okay. Moved by uh, Aaron, seconded by Andrea. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried. Uh, announcements. Uh, Dr. Godomsky, updates. Just a few things. Um, the first is that I would encourage everybody to uh, make sure that on uh, 
weather days that you uh, have your appropriate information into the school so we can do our one call and make sure that you get notified. Uh, also, MUR Channel 9, the uh, online and on the television, that information will be on there as well. Hopefully we won't have to use that anytime soon, but you never know. Um, so make sure that we have your information for that. Uh, just for information for the board, the, the, the withdrawal plan uh, for uh, services for SAU 56 and, and Rollinsford, uh, that plan hopefully will be completed. You'll be have a chance to uh, discuss in that public tonight the uh, contract for services that's being in the process of negotiations if everything is acceptable with that. The next step would be to go to the State Board of Education, which um, I've already got a marker on their agenda for December 12th. So hopefully we can get that into them next week uh, and get that process well in the way. In your packet, there is a few pages with some of the uh, House bills and Senate bills and where they are. I just put that in there because this is a, a brief overview by New Hampshire School Administrators Association. Uh, they do a really nice job at tracking all of this and letting us know when the uh, House is going to meet and what the laws are being proposed and where they are in the process. So this is just a, a, a few of them and, and again it's interesting to, to follow these and kind of catch up. but. Um, Every year there seems to be more and more and more that directly affect education. So we're uh, just to bring to your attention some of the things that uh, are in the process of being tracked. I actually have a question on that. Um, one of the uh, new laws, they're, they're calling the new law, which is, um, I'm trying to find the exact one here now, um, is, is, is a new requirement for feminine hygiene products in middle schools. Now, middle school is d defined as 6 through 8. So I'm wondering if our school um, is also required to do something along those lines as well. Um, I believe there is uh, that expectation um, that that would be available. And, and, and I speak Gail, yeah, Gail, we it's a Senate bill, I think it's 142. Yeah, I think so. Um, and it's been brought yeah. up to the State Nursing Association. Mm -hmm. Um, Dick and I have talked about it, and we can still, um, they can have products like in my office. Yes. Uh -huh. Rather than I just wondered if they were putting them down in the other restrooms, because mm -hmm. the problems that I'm hearing on the list serve is that the kids are putting them on the mirrors and just really um, not understanding yeah. the true purpose of, of passing that. Mm -hmm. Right, and I, so, I, I, I just wanted to make yeah, sure, yeah. I wondered if we fell would fall under that law because because essentially fifth and sixth graders, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I, I figured it was probably already handled in the school, but I just wanted to check. Yeah, I believe it's it's stated that it's made made available too. Mm -hmm. um, right. right. So there's a variety of ways that, that you can handle that. But that's just one of the issues that was discussed at length before this was put in. On one hand it sounds like a good a good way to go, and on the other hand it, it it not only brings up a lot of uh, logistical and, and, and behavioral issues, um, but it's also a financial issue for a lot of school districts as well. So, uh, again, th that's why I bring this to your attention mm -hmm. because there are many in here that mm -hmm. kind of have unintended consequences along the way that seem really good on the surface, and then as you dive a little deeper into them, uh, they present some challenges. Yeah, particularly in the age. Yeah. You're not in a middle school. Or yeah. But yeah. Yeah. All right, thank you. Any? Did you mean to? And no, the only other thing is that uh, you've already got a little bit of a taste too. We've been deep into the budget and uh, crunching some numbers for that. And I know the board is also deep into negotiation process, and we're running numbers on that as well. So uh, a lot going on right now. Is it time to you? Any questions from the board? Or? Principal's update. Mr. Hartford. Um, I wanted to highlight mostly events because it's a busy time of year events-wise as well. Um, this is a nature's mm -hmm. classroom year. Um, fifth and sixth grade classrooms go to the nature's classroom every other year. Um, so that 
you know, it cycles through so the kids get to go one time during the fifth and sixth grade experience. Um, and we're kicking it off with a parent meeting on Monday night in the gymnasium. A representative from Nature's Classroom will be here to answer questions and provide further information. We've sent initial packets home. Um, it does cost um, a few hundred dollars, and we're going to look at doing some fundraising to help offset um, costs for families. Um, but we haven't started any of that yet. We wanted to roll out the information first and have a representative come and answer questions for parents. Uh, Student-led conferences are coming up starting next Thursday and then the following Monday before Thanksgiving. Students will get to um, bring their parents in and showcase some of the things that they've been doing during the first trimester. First trimester ends the day before Thanksgiving, so we are a third of the way through the school year, if you can believe it. And with that, um, we do trimester award ceremonies after each trimester, and that's going to take place on Thursday, December 5th. Um, a third of our kids will be recognized by their classroom teachers, and parents will be invited uh, for an afternoon award ceremony. Uh, let's see, the other thing I'd like to keep you updated on is our professional development. We did have a day last Friday, and we continued our work with Alicia Space Messier, who's being contracted through UNH to help us with our literacy instruction. Um, and the focus on Thursday, or last Friday, was um, having classroom teachers really beginning to lay out what they currently um, teach in different areas of their literacy program. Um, so that we have a written scope and sequence across all grade levels. Um, concerns have come up uh, as we've started about you know, wondering if there are gaps in what we're teaching, um, are kids missing something at a different grade level. And because we're multi-aged, it's critical that we have it um, across grade levels so that um, as our kids go from like a first, second grade, maybe to a second, third grade, and then a third, fourth grade, it's not a skill that's missed um, along the way because of how we're arranged. So a lot of good work was done on Friday. It's an in initial step for the classroom teachers. Um, the rest of the staff dug into um, a book read that we're doing um, called Troublemakers, which is not a favorable term for a book. Um, but it's uh, looking at kids who have difficulty in school and what behaviors they might exhibit and giving um, educators you know, different strategies on you know, looking beyond the behavior um, and seeing what the true need is of each of the kids. And they have case studies of different kids in the book. So it should be an interesting book for to get through. And, I did a little professional development for myself last evening at Wentworth Douglas. Um, found out through Julie Person that they offer a monthly um, workshop for educators, families, the general public. It's free. Um, they give you a meal for free. So last night um, they did um, a documentary called Screenagers, and it's um, about mm. children and screen time and technology. Uh, but it ended up being a little bit more than that. It was um, a lot about how parents can communicate with their kids better, uh, being able to listen to what their kids' needs are rather than trying to fix kids' problems. And after the documentary, there was a panel um, of three folks, including a student, a high school student, who has had um, technology issues and depression issues herself and was able to provide some insight to the other kids that actually attended um, and some of her struggles and you know how she's you know managing you know her screen time and her relationships with her families. There is a second part to it next month on Wednesday, December 11th from 6 to 8 um, called Taming Technology, one of our RGS parents is leading the discussion. He was on the panel last evening. Um, and it's called Taming Technology, a Practical Guide to Effective Digital Parenting. Um, so we're going to put that out for our families. Um, we'll send out um, information about that if anybody's interested. You do have to register for it. It's free registration, but there's a first come, first serve type of 
of situation. And then the last thing that I wanted to highlight is our PTO. Um, and I put this right into my report. Um, we're, we have a couple of representatives from the PTO in case you folks have any questions. Um, but last year was all about, you know, restoring the PTO, you know, getting their name out there. Um, they did a lot of work on, you know, developing guidelines and, you know, being official um, and doing a lot of things that had fallen by the wayside in the past. So this year they're looking to really make an impact and looking at not just doing a little fundraiser here and there to have money to provide to staff necessarily, although they still do that. Um, so a few parents have been talking about upgrades to our playground. And so we've started a playground committee and we've had a couple of meetings and came out of um, the meetings with five key areas that um, they wanted to focus on. And it, not necessarily just this year, it could be a multi-year project depending on um, financing and you know, the blessing of the board. So the five areas are, uh, we've talked about a fitness or walking trail around the outskirts of the playground with little fitness stations and signs on what to do. Um, improvement and replacement of some of the playground structures as we walked around and really looked at it. Some of the um, protective siding has started to chip away and you know pieces have broken and not been replaced and now it's just a stanchion there that you know, there's nothing to do at. Um, and some of the structures are a little bit older too. Um, field improvements, we've talked about. Um, we don't have the rec program necessarily using our baseball diamond anymore. So we've you know, talked about, do we keep it a baseball diamond and make it look good as a baseball diamond? Do we do all grass and make it a soccer? Do we keep it both? Um, so just looking at it and seeing what would uh, be the best idea. Um, upgrading our soccer goals. You know, we've got part of the goal there, but we're missing sort of the braces and the nets, and they need a paint job. Um, something that we've talked about since I got here is doing some more paintings out on the tar. We've got some four square now and the basketball course, but we've talked about hopscotch, and we've talked about some other games that kids can do in the winter when our fields disappear. And then, um, I had brought up last year an outdoor learning center area, something that could be multi-use, and that came up during um, the uh, playground committee meetings, not by me actually. Um, it just turned into a discussion about you know, educational purposes that it could be used for picnic tables for families to sit at while their kids are out on playground or fitness trails and making this sort of a center of the community and revitalizing that area of the building. So a lot of great ideas about financing and applying for grants and um, getting local folks to donate um, time, labor. Um, people on the committee have some pretty strong connections with businesses and local folks that are contractors. Um, so I've sort of held them off saying we need your blessing to move forward and if you had any questions Well, my first, as I read through this, and thank you for sending this along, Rich, and for the, uh, is that this is good timing because, as we, we already talked about it in the last hour a little bit and, and a little bit at our last meeting, we have a new policy that has come down from the highest levels of education from the federal level through the state to us. We have a new health and wellness policy, which uh, has a lot to do with keeping kids outside, active, fit, uh, and making sure they're getting that kind of uh, opportunity and and it is a new policy now that we just approved, and part of it is forming a committee, um, and then doing, as, as Katie mentioned, a, 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 a try a, a three, three times a year check in on that. How how is it going? What are you doing? And I, I would say every single one of the items that you've listed here would fall under that. And we have not yet formed that committee. We're probably going to wait till like January or February to to get that going, just because it's a busy time of year. Um, and we certainly would love to have PTO, uh, we certainly want community members and we'd love to have an official PTO person on that committee so that we can work more in coordination. Um, 
So uh, certainly um, looking at it, you know, just hearing about what you want to do here, and, and it all looks very positive. I don't know what, what else, uh, I don't know what else to say yeah, at this point. Yeah, 100% but. great ideas. And I, I love the idea of also thinking about it as a community space when, you know, school's not in session, that the community can use and have a, you know, safe family space. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, and we were interested from your guys' perspective of, you know, requirements prior to Could the you final. just uh, state your name? Oh, I'm sorry. My name's Mike Robinson. Do I need to say my street? No, that's fine. Okay. Mike, thank you. <clears throat> I'm used to the water meeting. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, we were just curious from your perspective what you would be looking for, for to make a final decision or a final approval. I mean, obviously, we're still in the planning stages of this. Uh, it'll, yeah. We're still coming up with ideas. I mean, yeah, we've identified the key areas with even student input as well, mm -hmm. um, and, and that's been great. So, but you know, we'll keep continue the planning, refining that how we're going to do this. You know, the, the priority of when these things would happen. Um, but in terms of, we were interested from the school board's perspective, what you guys would need to see for a final acceptance, or you know, are certain things just do it, or are and then. Well, I guess where's the line? What's it just do? Go ahead and we trust you versus, you know, if you're going to change out some major improvements, you know, provide us the planning and some of those details. I don't know if you'd have all the answers now, but just starting that dialogue. <laughs> Uh, please, Bob, I, 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 think, I, I think you'll add something to us. Yeah. 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 First of all, thank you very much. I mean, it, it, oftentimes the, the budgets are very difficult to get these types of things done. So active participants, active parents, and, and organizations like PTO are, are awesome. So thank you for your support. Um, I think the most important piece is to keep the building administration actively involved in everything that you're thinking about. Because some of the things, to answer your question, you know, what, what does the board need to approve and what can you just go for, um, that's a hard question to answer without specific. So yeah, I would say keep the building principal involved in all of it uh, and he will know uh, the pieces that are very little issue, go ahead, just let it rip, and other things that, wait a minute, slow down, we need to look at the policies and perhaps get it approved by the board. So, And Rich and I have discussions all the time. So I think that's your important piece right there is to keep the building administration involved. Perfect. Well, and also, too, if there's a joint committee, it sounds like that would be yeah. another opportunity to kind of stay plugged in and stay aligned with yes. requirements from your, from your perspective. So, okay. It is, it is Excellent. But well, uh, really, uh, it was it was wonderful to read that section. Uh, Great. Of the Good. We're really? excited about it too. Yeah. Because, as Erin was saying, it's and, and something that. Me, and your, your first name. Already. Your name. Oh, I'm Carrie Choate. Um, <laughs> sorry. Well, only because we. we uh, yes, we need it for the records. Um, as Erin was saying, um, one of the reasons we're so excited about it is because it is a community space, um, and I feel that it's something that we can offer um, not to, just to our students while they're here, but after school as well. A lot of kids do go out there and play, um, and it would be nice to have um, a space that is welcoming and accessible to everyone. Um, that's another thing that we were kind of wondering about if we need to be ADA compliant. Right now it doesn't seem to be a very accessible space to all students. Um, Maybe that hasn't been a concern in the past, but um, that's been a thought that we've had yeah. as well. Um, but we are excited about the project and any input that you need from us, let us know. Well, very exciting. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you very much. Yeah. That's everything. Well, thank you very much. Well, we've had some very patient uh, student <laughs> reps. <laughs> so see, so we're, we're going to st we'll start with our uh, high school student rep, uh, Nicholas Garrity. Thank you. Um, just to start, I'd like to look back. Before our October meeting, there was a important thing that I did miss. Um, on October 2nd, there was the first annual Special Olympics bowling tournament in Sanford, Maine. Um, and Rollinsford's own Max Blackman finished second place in the men's 14 to 19 category. So I just wanted to take a moment to recognize him for that. That's not bad. Um, oh, is it 10 pin? Uh, I'm pretty sure, yes. Okay. I don't know all the details, but it was the first, <laughs> it was the first annual, so I assume that they will be continuing. Fabulous. Thank you, Nick. That's good to hear. Um, um, so, also, 
on November 1st was the end of quarter one, so now we're into quarter two. Um, coming up, we have our district musical for the year, which is grades three through 12. Um, something I tried to be able to incorporate Rollins for students in last year, but that didn't really work out. Um, but this year we have Mary Poppins. The show dates are this Friday and Saturday at 7 p.m. Next Friday and Saturday um, at 7 p.m. as well with a 2 p.m. matinee on the 23rd. Um, the golf team finished second place in Southern Maine. Um, last year they didn't have a great season, so it was good to see them kind of recover this year and get back on the right track. Um, for football, on November 1st and November 8th, March would beat Gorham 41 to 12 and South Portland 49 to 6 respectively. And this Saturday, they will play Kenny Bunk in the Southern Maine Championship. And if they win that game, they will play either Lawrence or Brunswick next Saturday, the 23rd, in the state championship. Wow. Um, now looking ahead, in the upcoming weeks, um, like most schools, we have the 27th, 28th, and 29th off for Thanksgiving. Um, and December 7th, from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., we have our Holiday Bazaar at the high school in the lobby and the gym. Um, this event is always hosted by the graduating class, so this year the class of 2020. Um, we're selling poinsettias like we normally do. Um, and all these proceeds go to the senior class for graduation. Um, I think you're a member. That's that, that, right. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. I will be graduating. Let's <laughs> make sure that we know that. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> um, lastly, I would just like to update the board. Um, I know Megan last year did her best with updating um, with college acceptances. I'm hoping to continue with that. So as of now, we have nothing. But. Um, <laughs> Our, our, first, um, our first batch of acceptances is December 1st, and hopefully by the next meeting I'll know some names that I can find. The students have to report. Yeah. Report it in, so they don't report it in. As, I mean, as, long, as, as long as I, I know, then I'll provide the names. <laughs> right. and please get their permission to use their yeah, name. Or, or just say, and someone's been accepted at. You don't have to use a name if they yeah. don't want their name used. Yeah, I just wanted to continue with that and Thank just you. recognize the Rollins for students that are moving on to college. I'm sure a lot of people want to give some of that, and especially some of the staff. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Nick. Yeah, that's all I have for now. All right, that's good. And we have uh, Stella as a last minute stand in, I believe, correct? Yeah. So it's really nice to see you this evening, Stella. Um, please go ahead with your middle school report. Okay, so throughout the week before Veterans Day, um, we did an assembly for the veterans, and we basically gave them a ginormous thank you. <laughs> so we had videos and music, and there was like, a bunch of kids that like did a bunch of projects for them, and it was really nice. We also served them lunch, which is very great. Um, there was also recently a soup kitchen. That's where about 10 or 15 students go to a church, and they make and serve food to people less fortunate or just want to go out and have a nice time. And I've actually participated in one of those, so that was actually really nice seeing you smile and have fun. Well, where, where, do you, where do you go? Do you go someplace in, in the South Bear? Yeah, that's yeah. really much. And then there is National Junior Honor Society is organizing a Hunger Game tournament. It's to raise money for the causes. There's also a lollipop pool that basically... I'm sorry, I have, I have to go, you have to go back and explain to me how you're going to work in the Hunger Games theme, <laughs> because it, it was pretty, uh, I read the books. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, just, just so you know. Okay. It's like a dog alternative that's like Hunger Games. Okay. Yeah. Not dangerous. Okay. <laughs> That'd be bad. <laughs> yeah. So we're doing All right, that. So I didn't mean to interrupt you by that. Yes, that's going to be next week. And then there was a lollipop pool, and that's where we get a bunch of lollipops and people pay like a dollar also to raise money. And they just get a lollipop, and they may win a prize, like a different prize, like a bunch of candy or something. So that's nice. And some sports, oh, some sports that have just started is basketball and cheer. 
And then there's also a newspaper club that's going to start in about a week. And they're just going to write and report on what's going on in the school. And just some cool things. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice. Uh, now, of course, you both are welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting, which will be a little bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> but I also know you're very busy students and you're free to leave. Thank you very much for your reports. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, moving along, uh, I just want to do a very quick update on the Willie Street uh, water project just because some things have been circulating around. Um, so uh, the Water Commission um, uh, had, I, I, I'm not quite sure where to start because the school came into it kind of late actually. Um, but a couple weeks ago, the Water District had a public meeting on uh, the water on Willie Street where four houses, I believe, and the school were affected by water that doesn't look appealing. It's perfectly safe to drink, but it doesn't look appealing. Um, I attended uh, one of the public meetings and um, learned a lot more about that. In, in the time after, after what they heard at that public meeting, um, they, uh, they, they thought that they would get people together for a meeting, and then because of weather and because of some of the things they heard at that meeting, they have postponed doing anything uh, this year. So we can look forward to the water main being replaced from Locust uh, uh, to uh, Prospect, whatever was on the other end there, yes, um, sometime next year, I think. So, but all I know is that they have postponed um, and they will be seeking a, an additional bid just to, to have a comparison, and we'll know more about it um, as, as spring approaches. So, just wanted to bring people up to date on that school, so don't have to worry about it going on. All right, uh, moving forward. Um, so we're at the financial updates. The first one is the, uh, our current budget. So it's included in the packet. Mm -hmm. um, since the last update, we did uh, encumber the tuition for Marshwood. Mm -hmm. um, as you can see from the chart, we are down eight students from what we budgeted. We budgeted 158 students. We're at 150 right now. So that's a savings of just over $84,000. Mm -hmm. um, we, Since this report, we have encumbered special ed. So your next month's report will include we'll special that. ed. There is a, a little bit of a savings there as well from students that have but it hasn't been completely encumbered yet, is what you're thinking. Not in this report, in this but report, right. I did it today. So yeah, okay. for your next report, it will be. Nancy was um, going over it, making sure that the IEPs matched what was being built. So mm -hmm. that has since been encumbered, so you'll see that in your next report. Um, as far as revenue goes, I have updated the figures based on the, the new state revised numbers. I also, during the tax rate setting, I did adjust Medicaid reimbursement because if you remember correctly, I've been reporting that there's a lot of uncertainty about that. So we had estimated 10,000. I dropped that to five just to be on the safe side. Um, so that's done. Um, and then I had put in here that the tax rate was being set, but I believe it has now been set. So. Um, also, I wanted to let you know that next week is the audit for last year. All right. So they're coming next week, so I'll report on, on that once that's complete, but I don't expect any. All right. And, and after that's when a lot of the other stuff happens, the things get moved to Yeah, uh, so to once that's article. complete, yeah, I had put in your budget notebook that um, that $97,000 <coughs> transfer will happen once that audit's complete. That will happen, and those will go into those funds. So. Any questions for Katie on our current budget? Um, the next item there is um, the coming our, our new our new budget. We just had a meeting on that, uh, and we, we saw the very preliminary. As Dr. Gadomsky said, we saw the preliminary preliminary budget, and we worked a bit on that. We made a number of changes to it. Uh, we removed a few things, postponed a few things, added a few things. Uh, one of the things we added, just so some people weren't here, we we, we raised the. Um, our water costs because we know that something's going to happen to raise our water bill next year as everyone in the water district no doubt will see so we, we raise that um, and, and, and we also um, put in um, the cost of an extra day of physical education as we start working out what our, what our health and wellness uh, policy is going to do whether that means adding physical education or trying to do some more things to help kids get uh, more active and outside and stuff so 
Um, you'll, you'll see more of that at, at, our, at the next budget round. There you go. Anything else the board would like to add on that? Or? Well, I think we have a good start. looks, but it's a, it's a really good start. I would, too, just be thinking as a board if there are any more articles you want to put together, too, so that... Yes, if we had had time, I did yeah. actually have a list yeah. <laughs> that we would go into. So probably next um, time we meet to go, you know, we should probably start yeah. drafting and, and, that. And I think I think we can easily say that there will be a building fund one, and there will be a tuition right. one. We hope to have a collective bargaining mm -hmm. agreement, obviously. Um, the operating budget. We Beyond can, that, I'm not sure. We can rough those in yeah. for next time. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll bring them in draft yeah. form. If there's anything you want added or deleted, then we can do that. Yeah. But we can rough in the more yeah. articles. Just get a start on it. Mm -hmm. And for those that weren't here earlier, the, the budget is essentially level at this point. Um, so it, it, it was it was up a little bit with the changes we've made. It was up eight thousand dollars. We put the changes we've made. It's going to go down. And there was one thing outstanding. SAU assessment. The SAU assessment. Yeah. So, so. Thank you. Any, any further? No. All right. So, um, new, new business. We have um, three policies for the first uh, for the first reading. Um, they are video and audience surveillance on school property. Uh, for the minutes. And by the way, reading through the new policy on minutes, I'd like to say that. Uh, our note takers, our, our minute takers, have been excellent throughout the years. It, it, the things that they were calling out, making sure that you named the first, uh, the, the motion maker, the second, the minutes have been very well taken by um, by our secretaries throughout. It's, it's been, I, I realized, wow, we don't we don't need this. Yeah, we, we didn't we, have to catch up on it. We've been doing this. So, um, we have no changes to make there. And the public comment and participation at board meetings is another one, is, is, is the third one that we've done our first reading on, and again, I think we've been um, very true to what the spirit of allowing um, public comment is, is, is said in, in that policy. So so that's the first reading. Have people, uh, any questions, comments on them? No, I thought they were fine. Thank you, so. All right, then we will uh, take a motion to move those for second reading uh, and action at our next meeting. So moved. Okay. Second. Um, the, uh, the list of those three, uh, Allison, are on the agenda. You just have to do them. But so um, moved and seconded. Uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. And for second reading um, and passage are the ones that we, so are the um, part-time and substitute professional staff employment, non-discrimination, drug-free workplace and drug-free schools, tobacco products, bans, use, and possession in and on school facilities, <laughs> change of school assignment best interests, change of school or assignment manifest educational hardship, data retention records, and local records retention schedule. Um, the last two were carries over, carried over from our last one. Emily um, and I did have a discussion yesterday uh, with Bob about those, and she, and she is a fine with the way things have been explained, and, uh, and so I, I just want to let you both know that she was she Great, wanted, yes. she had some questions, yeah. um, but she said that it would be fine going forward with these, and we may take a closer look at some of those things as we go forward. But we think these were fine to go forward with the way Bob explained things. So, so on this one, uh, it, we have. Um, I'll make a motion to accept the policy for the second reading. Okay, uh, motioned and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right. Good. Motion carries. And I won't bring up the first reading while we're doing the second reading. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> we, did, we did well last week. Our last month. But, uh, we did, actually. All right, then um, a few weeks ago, no, another, a few months ago, yeah. well, this, if we, so that the, under old business we have the unauthorized uh, communication devices, which I think is in the handbook, correct? Correct. And um, 
uh, some people on the board uh, found it very uh, interesting that we talked about uh, pagers and beepers. <laughs> and so we decided, so they offered to up, they offered to update that um, that that uh, it, it's also it's also a school board policy, but I think it's in the handbook and handbook refers to it. Yes. So we have a, a, a sort of the, a reading of how that's been updated. Have you all had a chance to look at that? Yes. And essentially, all what it does is is, is replace um, <laughs> camera yeah, phones, it, pagers, beepers, uh, you know, with smartphones. We just yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, and kind of updated it for grade school, getting rid of lockers and things like that, just so it's more more appropriate to our our grade school. So we need to uh, vote on accepting that, or just. I think we yeah, I would recommend because that yes. way we can adjust yes. the policy as well. Yes, adjust the policy and the handbook can be adjusted then. So, so a motion on accepting these changes into the uh, into the um, into our policy and into the handbook. A motion on that, please. I'll make a motion to accept these changes into the policy. Second. Okay, motion by Andrea, second by Aaron. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All right, we are moving. Moving. All right. The other old business is um, sort of, uh, a little update on the sixth grade community forum. Um, you know, with, with the, uh, and a discussion by the board on that. Um, we had the sixth grade community forum on um, October twenty uh, eighth, and we heard uh, we heard from the educational leaders in both Marshwood and uh, the Longford School District, and um, it, was, it was great to hear that. Um, essentially, they stated unequivocally that, that there's no there's no clear better choice that, that they're both uh, both options are good whether you uh, attend a K through you're a sixth grader and you attend K through six or if you're sixth grader and you attend six through eight. Um, we heard a lot of so we heard a lot of interesting uh, stuff going on there. Um, we were committed to having this uh, sort of a discussion uh, each year. We have not included into the budget this year um, for next year. We're not including in next year's budget um, the moving of sixth grade to uh, to um, to Marshwood at this time. Um, you know, certainly I'm very sympathetic to to any parent who thinks their child would do better there. I'm very sympathetic to the parents who feel that their children would do well here. Um, it, it, just it. But as a board member, I have to think about not just a, an individual child, but what best serves not only the community, but the entire sixth grade. Um, it, there is a, it comes with a cost. It's about $250,000. That would be our best guess. That would be what we would have to put in the budget this year if, if we were to uh, consider doing that. Um, once we make the move, it cannot be reversed. Um, it, it would be something that would be impossible probably to bring the kids back if, if we decided it wasn't working out well or that it was costing too much. Um, so it, given that there's that every, every choice is a good choice, so to speak, uh, we, we as a board have not put it into the budget um, for this year. But I think that gives us, you know, so, so we, we could have put it in the budget this year, we did not. Um, we could have put it on a warrant article this year, which we probably will not do, but we're not done doing warrant articles, so that, that's a possibility. Um, or the board can uh, do what we're doing, which is continue to monitor um, at, every year as we go forward. Um, you know, there will be space needs. Um, someday this will happen. If our, if our kindergarten um, uh, enrollment is any indication Someday we will be making this move, and it probably isn't too many years down the road, because it's great to have all these young uh, families and young kids coming in, but we will need the space as time goes on. So it, it, it's going to come uh, at some point. Uh, so, uh, so my person, my, my opinion, I'm just stating this now, and we'll go on to, to you guys, is is that we do hold the course, that we continue to monitor, that we continue to see as we move forward. Um, and uh, 
and, and, and also look to providing some of the increased services, perhaps, increased things that parents felt they were missing, um, in, increased physical education or, or um, increasing a, a way to have sports and do things. Look for things that perhaps we could do here in this school at a lesser cost than $250,000. So um, that, that's, that's where I stand on this right now, um, but always we'll continue to have input. But let's um, hear from the rest of the board as well. So on your last point, I agree wholeheartedly um, about seeing what we can do to add more services here at the grade school um, that maybe parents and teachers feel uh, are lacking compared to sixth grade at Marshwood. Um, that was a really good point, I think, that Tom made at the end of the forum that, um, you know, there's a lot more that we could do here um, that, are, that costs less, and there hasn't necessarily been an appetite for, for spending those dollars, but uh, it would be a lot less than, than sending six graders. Um, I think an important part of our job is really communicating um, with the community about what the costs are. Um, even if it's not something that we're putting forward at the moment, um, just so that there's an understanding. There's a definite perception um, out there that sending sixth grade to Marshwood would save us money in the long run. Mm -hmm. And even though you know you presented us with the, <coughs> the figures at the forum, um, there still seems to be some confusion about that. Um, so I think it would be important to maybe put something together more formal um, that we can publish and say this, this is how it breaks down and that it will be this much more every year. You know, there will be this one-time savings, but it will be this much more uh, in every budget so that people really understand um, the financial impact um, of the change. And not to say that that's the only criteria for making a decision, but I think it's one of, one of the more important ones. Okay. Um, I also was... You know, I've been hearing some ideas of giving um, parents the option of sending their student to Marshwood um, or, make, or remaining here at Rollinsford. And I certainly think, um, I'm not, I struggle a little bit how that would play out, um, mm -hmm. certainly how our, our town could manage and our school. Um, so I, I think definitely we still need to continue the conversations. There's enough um, folk, you know, parents that are, are vocal about it, um, but I, I think it's the big picture we all have to look at and consider not solely just the 23 students, but the entire school of students, the entire community, um, and what that impact of lowering that, you know, that many students out of the school will raise your per pupil tuition costs. Um, and which that's something that's always being looked at. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's it's everything. I think we have to consider everything that's involved with it um, and what's best for all the students here at Rollinsford. So I, it's hard to really make a quick decision about it, um, honestly, because I think they're both great schools and the small town offers a lot, um, as well as Marshwood offers a lot, so yeah, I'm, I'm torn. <laughs> but I, I definitely think the conversations still need to happen. Mm -hmm. We need to look at what the costs are, and you know, perhaps eventually we, we make that a decision for the town to make, um, you know, once mm -hmm. we present all the mm -hmm. facts. But I don't want voters going to vote without all the information and, mm. and saying that, you know, if we do send our sixth graders to Marshwood, it, as a community, we need to evaluate, are we eventually wanting to reduce the numbers here at Rollinsford? Because they could argue going over at sixth grade, you could say, well, Elliot and South Park join in fourth grade. We move them over at Great Works, you know, so now you're saying, okay, now fourth and fifth and sixth go to, oh, you know, and then eventually you're, you're left with K through three here, and can you justify the numbers, and, oh, and or where would we, so, yeah. 
So still a lot of stuff talking. A lot but, to <laughs> <laughs> but a lot to consider. And so a lot to consider. I want folks to realize it's a lot to consider. No one's trying to ignore anyone's Absolutely. concerns or needs, but there's a lot to consider. And I'm sure some people think, well, you've had you've had five years to consider it, but but <laughs> until until there's a real. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I guess I, I'm fine with letting uh, the voters vote on on this, but I think we would need to do a lot of work in presenting the facts and the possibilities of what could be the effect. Um, and while we've, we have had five years, we've also had five years of communication from the community, reduce the budget, reduce the budget, True. reduce the budget. So that's you know, part of where we're coming at this from. You know, this, this is a big increase that's, that will persist over the years, so it's, it's important that everybody understands that. And I would just say, too, on the estimate, it was based on current students that we have. Yes. If you remember correctly, when yes. we moved to, to Marshwood, we had an influx of kids who we weren't accounting for because True. they weren't going to the grade school or, or to Summersworth at that point. True. That's right. So we're not factoring any of those kids who are currently going other places than Correct. the grade school. So that's also an added, you know, thing that you probably want to build into that estimate as well. Yes, I would say the, fir the first, whatever the first year is that we do send sixth grade, we would have to count on up five to ten more students. Right, because you, yeah. you know you have kids that so are going to the grade true. school right now that possibly would go to Marshwood. So at that, so that, that that's 100000 more if it's, a, if it's ten more kids. And then we also just increase the tuition yeah. rate by $705 yeah. per kid for next right. year. So that's anyway, also well, lots of things to consider. Know, consider but that yeah. estimate was a low, a yeah. low end. Yeah. So I guess. And I don't know how we would even begin to entertain um, giving parents the option. How do you manage it's that? A, I mean, that? In a big a, city, I could see doing it, giving folks the choice, but yeah. you know that they're all going to a, a high school. Yeah, I, 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 at the community forum, I certainly was um, supportive of either going or staying in, 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 in educational purposes. Uh, I, I would not support um, an option because I think that that creates a situation where in such a small setting basically if anybody takes that option you're making the choice for somebody else I mean it's not like you've got a hundred in each grade level and if ten decide to go it's not a big deal you just filter it in um, if you're down to 23 kids and you know 10 of them or 15 of them decide decide to either go or stay effectively you're making a choice for the rest of the kids so that would be very difficult. Yeah. And so as you've said, it's, it's, it becomes a, a bit of a, a nightmare to try to do that. So any other thoughts on that that we wanted to share right now? I wanted to make sure that we sort of had this discussion and let people hear where we were on that. At this point. Okay. We'll move on. Uh, we do have a couple action items. So the Marshwood tuition, uh, the, the Marshwood uh, tuition contract. So we had some changes made to it, and we looked at it um, last time. And one question came up last time, um, which had to do with um, the um, ability to opt out. And um, it really is, you know. Uh, we have the ability to opt out. We have from the beginning. Marshwood never put in an option to opt out from the beginning, and they did not put it in when things changed. So I think we're. I think that was our only question, and I think yeah, that's. Uh, yeah, that's uh, just good. just a reminder that you're not. Uh, this is not contract negotiations. Right. This is right. basically a discussion just to clean up the existing contract. Right. right. So you're not changing any of the language or the expectations or anything else. You're just cleaning up what's there. And, and because we have a larger uh, public here today, it was a couple of the things that the board was interested in, in clarifying in the contract. Um, over the last few years, we've had a number of community members, a couple number of them, we have had two uh, community members come and say that, that they had a foreign students and they would like their foreign student to go to Marshwood. And Marshall said, that would be great. Here's the tuition cost. At which point we said, well, you know, you kind of get the benefit of having a foreign student and really you want us to pay all of it? 
Anyway, it, it's now, they, they have agreed that, yes, they do get the benefit, and they'd be happy to entertain um, a foreign uh, student attending from Rollinsford at any time, um, for whatever period of time they would do that. So uh, that was very, very nice uh, for them to do, for, to, to sort of, Sort of have a little shift in their policy there, and uh, there was one other thing there that was went in billing things. There were some a lot of billing things were changed, especially around special ed. Really, kudos to um, to, to to our superintendent's um, office there with um, Katie and Nancy Michaud, who's our special ed director, and, and Bob. They work they work very hard to get the special ed worked out, and we they, special ed used to they used to bill us twice a year, I think. Well, last year that got changed to once a month because it was too hard to try to figure it all out. Six months, whole six months. So, and anyway, it's much easier on the billing end too to make sure that everything's accurate month by month versus yeah. So, and, and some language was cleaned up. Um, but I, I know the, I know the foreign aid, the foreign student was a, um, a big one for us, and I think there was one other that was also just sort of straightened out. Working so we could reach out to those people who request that let them know. But, yeah. but I don't remember who they I don't remember who they were either. We could look back in the minutes because yeah. they came and asked the board. Right, right. right. so their names would be yeah. in the minutes yeah. from was that a year ago or two years? Well it was it was a year ago and two, two years, years ago. Oh. I think that I think that's it right. may have been the same person though. Oh. Mm -hmm. I, think, I don't think so. Uh, it was matter. two different two different things. I can look back if you would like it. Well, I have to I do the minutes. <laughs> <laughs> do the minutes. Right. All right. So uh, anyway, that's uh, so. I think we're ready to accept the um, the changes. Yeah. It, this does not. This does not do away with uh, what I had hoped was that we that we could extend it, but we can't because we have to come back to the public. We have to come back to the town to extend the contract. So um, I was hoping we could just extend it and vote on it and be done. But no, no, we'll be coming back to to you all. Vote for that. So, I'll make a motion to accept the changes uh, to the current contract. I'll second. Okay. I um, you were saying more. I was, I was waiting for your <laughs> second. It. Uh, for the discussion, I would like to thank uh, Bob Gonomsky and um, Superintendent um, Caverly. Caverly for they they actually worked this out uh, together. Um, uh, saving legal costs and everything else to getting all that done because all they were doing really was cleaning up language. So, um, we'll send you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> no. No. All right, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye, aye. Aye. Motion carries. We now have the 2021 20, 2020 2021 calendar to look at. I know. I was it goes fast, doesn't like, it? What is this? I know. And I looked at the first day of school. You did. Which is in, it, it, it's August 26th. Wow. Seems wicked early. Well, we have a, yeah, we have a late Labor Day next week. We have a late Labor Day, yeah. It, it, uh, it changes a little bit. That's weird. Yeah. So will Marshwood schools do the same? Marshwood has, by contract, starts after Labor Day. Yeah, we, we've, uh, I actually met with all of the area superintendents uh, from Marshwood, Dover, Rochester. We've tried to mirror our calendars, and it was a little bit of an effort and futility because of the collective bargaining agreements are all different, and, and some specify before Labor Day, some specify after. We tried to line up as much as we could. We got, the obviously, the vacation times lined up with Marshwood, uh, and we got it as close as we could. But, uh, we have a few more days. Yeah, yeah, and as you see, see that still uh, ends school on June 15th. Depending on the weather. Depending on the weather. Last year was good. Last year was great. So, any any uh, concerns about this calendar? School board concerns. All right, then a motion, please. A motion to accept. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 2020, 2021 school calendar. Second. Motion by Andrea, second by Aaron. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. And the last bit is the Fun Time University um, contract.
know if any of you had a chance to look at it. I do have a, a question because it looks, as I looked at revenue, it looks like uh, Funtime University operates really for 10 months. It doesn't operate until the summer. Mm -hmm. And yet the, we have the period here as a full year under, term, under terms. Oh, up here. Yeah, under term, under the under the uh, term of agreement. So I think I think that should be. Um, we just kept what has you know, yeah. been here. Yeah, I know. So I know there was a. So I think that should be uh, fixed. Maybe have it say school school is it school calendar? I, I will look at uh, Tracy if you want to add something. There. We so have they have access. They go off site during the summer, so they run through the summer, but they don't technically use the facilities. Mm -hmm. They have access to our bathrooms in the morning before they go off site. Um, I see. So we let them in. So, so is it better to leave it this, uh, this way then, probably, since you're coming up on, on school grounds and doing I, things? I think because they pick up kids here and parents pick up kids here at the end of the day and they use our facilities before and after their trip. I think it's probably. Okay, because I, I, I don't think it hurts anything. Okay, all right. Because I'm starting to. Because I'm saying, well, wait a minute. If, that, if that's true, <coughs> is there going to be a, a contention with rec and mm -hmm. stuff? So. Nope. It's a different side all of right. the building. They, they don't interact. Thank you. And the only other question I have on the contract is um, I, I believe the uh, the fee has, has been the same for quite a long time. And I'm, I'm over, and I, we might have gone up 10 or $20 a month. Uh, last year or two years ago, I can't remember. And I'm wondering if we want to um, uh, discuss raising the fee a little bit. Tracy, go ahead. That's an option. It's, uh, it, when that happens, it affects our fees. So that if that's what you guys decide, that's fine. But it means that our fees might go up a couple dollars here or there also. So just to play devil's so, advocate, your yeah. fees have not gone up at all in the last few years? Not more than a dollar. Mm -hmm. okay. Anyway, you, could, you, you can ask. Mm -hmm. You've got people in the room that go to fun time. There, there, isn't, there isn't a large um, going up of our fees. And I, and I think another question would be that it, 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 there are probably some costs that are incurred, and certainly you know more water use and things like that. Um, it, 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 I don't, and I don't know what's reasonable, really, to be charging. So I, and I don't, and the school can't break down exactly what the <coughs> what the extra um, cost might be for water and sewer and those things. But so I, I don't know if the board wants to entertain that or not. Another question, Judy. Um, not that it has much. Tracy Lorian. Tracy Lorian. Sorry, Allison. Not that it has um, all to do with it. We do use water and maybe paper towels, um, but at the same time, we turn off lights that are left on. We lock doors that might be left. We we do we do for the school on a regular basis to make sure that it's safe and that type of thing. We help monitor in and out activity and stuff like that. So I'm not saying that that is, you know, but at the same time, Funtime has made sure that this place is as best it can be. And we've honestly saved money to the town and the school by doing that. So yes, you, you make your decision and do your things but you know if the big lights are left on in the gym after the custodians go home and maybe they are going to come back at 10 or 11 or something we'll have the lights turned off we'll shut down hallway lights if the teachers didn't know that a custodian left early something like that i, 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 I understand um and, and perhaps the lights were left on for you who knows but um I do. I do want to clarify something, though. For, for my own understand, I don't understand. It. This is a for-profit um, venture, correct? Yes. Okay. I just. I just wanted to make sure that, that, that I understood that correctly. So, um, does, does the board want to discuss uh, a, a small raise, of, or not? I mean, I, just, I don't know. I don't know really what's a um, appropriate um, amount, but I, I mean, I do know they're you know providing a service. Um, for the community, um, really by There really offering. is nothing else. Right. You need to do before or after school care that's licensed. Mm -hmm. um, 
and it, it is difficult, I think, to to figure out what is fair because the mm -hmm. hours are kind of mm -hmm. before school and after school. So I don't, I don't know. It's a, it's a tough one. Well, why don't we uh, why don't we um, approve this contract as written, which is at uh, the two hundred and twenty dollars a month, and but keep it open as we move forward. But it, it should be an annual. Should be an annual agreement, so yeah. we can. Yeah, and maybe and this we could bring this it forward too, maybe in yeah. May or June at the end yeah. of the year for next good, year. So that, that would be a good idea and a good time to discuss with, so that way if you with the principal. Yeah. Then she has the opportunity to raise her fees as well before yeah. parents need to yep. know. That's a good idea. That's like an excellent idea. All right. So then, as written, we will uh, look at a uh, a motion to accept as written for uh, for I believe it's for this school year, correct? Yes. yes. The present. Yeah. Uh, and actually, in those dates have to. No, they don't. Those dates are correct. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. So I can make a motion to accept the contract as written. Or, or, yes. Before and after school program. Second. A motion by Andrea, second by Aaron. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. And that concludes our business. So we have future meeting dates. Um, there are SAU board meetings coming up the 18th, which will be the SAU budget, primarily, of any other business. And then on the 2nd of December, the, um, the public forum, I, I don't know, is so there already a public forum on the budget then? Anyway, yeah, there is a public yeah, hearing that night before the board meeting. While we're on this discussion, our next board meeting is scheduled for December 12th. We are presenting to the budget committee our budget that we've just done the preliminary preliminary of this evening on December 11th. Therefore, we can consider changing our board meeting and so rather than hold an extra uh, budget meeting, we could if we could consider moving our board meeting and of a budget meeting to the 4th, which is the Thursday before it's the 5th. The 5th. The 5th. The 5th. <laughs> which is the fifth. Wait a minute, let me see. Tuesday, uh, Wednesday is the 4th. Thursday oh, thank is you. the 5th. Did I ask Tom about that date? Yeah, you did. Oh, thank goodness. Okay. Say the 5th is what Emily suggested. Yes. But, yeah, and that's the one I, and I did ask Tom last night. <laughs> okay. Yep. So, so did he, was, he said he could make the 5th at 5.30. Okay. Can you two make it? Oh, yeah. Can, can uh, the SAU make it? So uh, December 5 at 5.30. Yes. So uh, and it, will and no, it will be noticed. So, so we, and then a board meeting, and then a board and then a board meeting afterwards. afterwards so that we don't have to schedule a whole separate evening. Yep. And I would suggest December. if we can't finish in that hour that we add, yes. you know, have it on the agenda to discuss to final, because I'm going to have to finalize the budget pretty quick to get it ready for the budget committee for the 11th. Yes, you so. are. And I, I, yes. We'll finish it. Yes. <laughs> we will finish it. So I mean, We'll have to do it that night. So, um, saying, so. I, I can't speak for uh, working people. Is it possible to start in the morning at 5.30? Is that at all possible? <laughs> what do you think? Can, can, you, can you kick me out of work? <laughs> 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 I won't schedule any Can meetings, you make so sure I get out of there, there by <laughs> no I, meetings? I, no on Thursday, I, I can do that. I'm going to assume Emily. Okay. okay. Thursday, <laughs> you're saying at 5 o'clock, December 5th? Yeah, and again, I don't know about Tom and Emily for that because I think I did say 5.30. Well, let's aim well, for 5 and we'll find out from there. Yeah, three of us. That said, we did make a lot of... We made a lot of headway today. Yeah. Right, so it so might be enough, but yeah. it wouldn't hurt to have a little buffer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So now we're on a deadline. Yeah. 5 <laughs> p.m. Yeah. on the 5th. Yeah. For, for, we will have a budget workshop and then at starting hopefully at 5 or 5.15 or somewhere in there. Um, and then we'll go on to the board meeting and we will not be meeting on the 12th. Okay. Okay. Um, Well, and, and, and then, that will be our last meeting, not only before we present to the Budget Committee, but also before the Budget Committee has their public hearing on the school budget, which is going to be uh, January 4th, which is the Saturday. Mm -hmm. Are we going to start at school? Four. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could, depending on what happens on the 11th at the Budget Committee, you could schedule another. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
meeting between the two. Between the two, we may have to. Yeah. 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 If it's clean at the hearing, at the, the meeting, meeting, then, then it's we should okay, be fine. But if there's but changes that we need to make, then we would probably need to meet again. Yeah. Yeah, they might make changes then, although I... Or it's hard to know, yeah, but then, yeah. then yeah. it might be... Yeah. Yeah. The, timing is, the timing is really hard this year for some It is, yeah. But anyway, okay. We'll talk more about that at our, at our next meeting. Um, and our plan is to do the, the binders again for the budget committee, so they Excellent. have it. I think that was well received last year, so... Yes. Excellent. So uh, thank you for your work on that, and we'll, we'll make sure that the meetings are noticed properly. Yeah. All right, so we are ready for, um, I'm find my next page. Um, we're ready for closing comments from my visitors. If I could ask a question. Oh. Mike Robinson, Mike Robinson. again. Um, you mentioned a neutral budget, and forgive me, I haven't been involved at all in any of this discussion, but uh, you mentioned there's a lot of pressure from the town to reduce the budget, reduce the budget. I mean, I look at my household budget every year over year, insurance costs go up, you know, kids eat more, they, they, take, they cost more clothes. Crazy, I know. But uh, is, I guess I'm, I'm, I, I'm involved in all these water meetings and just the, the state of things with that where there's been no real future planning to replace the capital investments within the, the district. And I, I hear this neutral budget, neutral budget, and I know, you know, insurance costs go up for, for teachers and salaries go, I would hope, go up. And, um, you know, I, I get concerned, are we, are we confident we're taking care of in, in financially planning to account for things that might happen with the infrastructure of the school? I, I was just curious to know your thoughts? It's an excellent question, Mike, and um, yes, um, I would say about seven or eight years ago, um, the school had not had not been kept up for a number of years, maybe, maybe ten years, let's say ten years ago, the school had not been uh, maintained mm -hmm. particularly well. Um, we had a, uh, at a certain point, uh, the school board at that time did a full engineering study of the school, and uh, we still refer to it, uh, actually, often, and some of the figures we use on some of the big changes we've had to do uh, came from, from that study, and they're a bit out of date. Earlier today, we were talking about the ventilation system, um, and the figures for doing that properly were $400,000, but that was 10 years ago. Well, it was uh, 2013, so mm -hmm. it was... Um, you know, seven, eight years ago. Yeah. So obviously those costs have gone up. Um, and, but we are starting, but it's in our budget this year to start looking at that, to get that plan done so we get the ventilation system done. So we made a, a, a commitment to not to hire a facilities uh, director uh, as, well, as well as a full-time custodian who does both jobs. Um, we made a commitment to start chipping away. And the town, after a few years, has become very uh, supportive of us doing that because we were we've been able to do it and keep our budgets down. Okay. And I would just say salaries for teachers, those are not included in our budget right now because that is a separate warrant article that gets put on for, for our collective okay. bargaining agreement. So that is not included in here. That would gotcha. be on top of the budget. Okay. And just because it's level, there are increases and decreases everywhere. So there's savings in other areas. So we did have we do have a lot of items in here for facilities. We might have had savings in other places that made it up. You okay. Know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and sometimes we've done maintenance via warrant articles yes. as well. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Ticket ones will usually go into a warrant article, so it will be part of the budget that is presented, but it will be voted on separately. Okay. For, the, for the big ticket maintenance items, and there have been a lot mm -hmm. in recent years. Okay, thank you. Other comments by visitors? Uh, Carrie Cho, not sure if this is the right place to ask this question, but I'm wondering about our um, preschool agreement with Summersworth. Um, specifically, is that a, a separate contract that we have with them? Because, And how long that would be for, and if there's... Um, any interest in pursuing potentially the option of switching over to Marshwood when that runs out for our students, and um, how many Rollins Road students are you know generally accepted into those programs? Because I know that preschool is be kind of becoming the hot topic with a lot of dual parents working. Yeah. So so let, 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 let me let me first of all, um, it's not preschool. 
Okay. Yeah, it's the um, it's the special education pre K. Okay. That that so that is, is, is what is okay. what uh, we get through um, through our students mm -hmm. who are summer's work to do that. The um, the Marshwood program is actually all the way over in Elliott. Is that okay? So um, that's good to know. So it's not it's not it's not a convenient okay. one to use. Um, we ex we expect that to continue. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna continue. Um, some people misunderstand mm -hmm. what it is, mm -hmm. though. It, it, it's, it is not a preschool, right. per se, that's open to the public for purposes of, of um, you know, getting every student involved in that. It is a, a special education program mm -hmm. um, for the services that we are required to deliver. Okay. By the state, required by right. the state to deliver. Okay. So, so. I appreciate that clarification. Yeah. I, I wasn't certain. Um, I've had parents tell me both things. Mm -hmm. um, I've had students attend it, so I was just curious as to what that agreement was because with all the talk of the withdrawal and um, the students, you know, sixth grade potentially moving, I was wondering if, you know, if that was something else that was on the radar. But I appreciate uh, it, clarification on that. And it's the type of thing that we're, it looks it, it, uh, it's the type of thing that, that we expect it to do. We, we, um, you know, we, we can certainly double check, but it, it's. I'm not, I, it, 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 I, I think it, it's not. It's not because we're in the same SAU. I don't believe that we go there. I'm not, I'm not sure. Right. But um, okay. And I, I mean, guess for instance, we, you know, why I had brought up those questions? It's a good question. To me, it's so a good I was question. Just wondering. Um, thank you. Double check. Other uh, public comments. Hi, Richard Ferrer, Carriage Drive. Um, we voted in March, I remember, and wore an article about the, moving the kids, the sixth graders. I remember a clear majority voted that they wanted to, they wanted to prove that. I'm wondering, does the school board, are you guys supposed to follow the will of the voters that said they wanted to make that move? And I know we haven't gone too far on that. You said you guys haven't really moved forward on that. Um, can you elaborate on that? Yeah, a little bit. Um, it, it was a petition warrant article, so it was brought to the school board uh, by by the by the by the general public, and um, there was no uh, money attached to that warrant article, and it was advisory. It was it, you know the, we, we would like to advise the school board to look into doing this, and we we, we are indeed seriously looking in as as we do. Um, we try to do that every year, and this year probably more seriously than, than others. So we are indeed looking at, we do look at that. We have just chosen not to take action on it at this moment. Thank you. Other comments? Hey, sorry, and just a clarification, Andrew, Aaron, Aaron, excuse me. You mentioned uh, that it actually wouldn't, to, to transfer our kids to the sixth grade to Marshwood, it actually wouldn't be a cost savings year over year. It would be a cost increase. Okay, I, I wasn't. I was part of that confusion that I, okay. I, I didn't realize that that would be a, an extra add-on cost to our budgets year over year. It would uh, the the savings from moving that number of kids from the grade school. It doesn't outweigh the increased tuition transportation and special ed costs so when you really do it all out um, a lot of times people will look at a cost per student comparison and that's really apples to oranges um, there's so many other factors involved and so that's what we're going to work on kind of a, a detailed cost analysis that breaks it all out and makes it easier hopefully to understand okay. right, but we were given a, a rough estimate a low we felt yeah, feel $250,000 that it would cost yeah. us more, 200,000 more, even with the reductions that would take place. And we were also thinking that that doesn't account for additional That only students. included the current fifth grade students that are here now, but we know for a fact that there are kids that don't go to the grade school now mm -hmm. that may go to Marshwood if that was the option. So that, could that number could increase. Okay. Because you have to remember right now uh, the number of students gets filtered into your your existing school, and every student, if we tuition out, um, is eleven thousand three hundred dollars for next year. So, if you add that up, plus the cost of a plus the, right minimum, plus the cost of a bus, plus the cost of any additional special education, 
uh, and then subtract what we figured we could reduce one teaching position and one paraprofessional position, it's still around a quarter of a million dollars. Mm -hmm. But it's good. It's good to hear these questions because it realizes that somehow we have to get find a way to say this in a clearer way as Aaron keeps yeah, telling yeah, yeah. us. Yeah. Thank you. Any other um, comments? Well, thank you all very much for coming out on, on, on a chilly Thursday uh, evening. As long as the sun shines tomorrow. Thank you very much. We do have non-public. We'll be uh, we a roll call to bring to non-public for C and D. We have a full I'll make a motion. Sorry. They're still meeting. Meeting's still going on. They're still meeting. <laughs>